Welcome everyone to the Fader Connections Path of Exile Community Podcast, episode number 51. This time we're here with Zizrin and Lighty slash Darky to talk all about the uh, class gauntlet that recently happened. And uh, yeah, just look at all the recent developments in PoE, the new features from a little bit of a competitive or racing angle. And uh, I think a great question to kick this all off is... Uh, how do you get into competitive PoE? Were you always competitive in games, or or no? That, let me keep that. Do you want to introduce yourself? Welcome, Ziz. How are you doing? Hi, my name is Zizrin, and now I'm unsure whether I should be introducing myself or answering that question. Um, I cut off the question. Huh? <laughs> I cut off the question, but let's let's keep the question for the second round. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm Zizarin. I uh, stream and play Path of Exile and ARPGs in general, and I'm generally known for organizing and running community events. And you're very known for that, since you're doing a great job at it. But you so many. <laughs> and uh, Darky, you have been uh, one of the big names uh, emerging from these competitive events that Ziz is hosting, but you've been around for a while. Uh, where, where should we know you from? Uh, I mean, from PoE, I think the first time I had any, I guess I would say, notoriety is from doing, like, Uber Eats Ray stuff back in Paranus League, where I killed her, like, you know, 500 times or whatever in Hardcore on some uh, very fair and balanced Bladefall mind build that oh, specifically that resulted in curses being changed for bosses to be a, a less multiplier instead of a reduction. And uh, before that, I was just getting stomped in, like, races by, like, like you know, Steel and Havoc and all that, so... Nothing there. He's being a little bit humble. He actually leveled to level 100 in hardcore just from killing Uber at Ziri. Just from Uber at Ziri? Yep. Yeah, from, from like 94 onward, yeah. That's risky. <laughs> not, not with that build. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And then to directly uh, transition to the second question, have you always been competitive in games? Have you always felt drawn to the competitive scene? Or was there one specific game in the past where you're like, oh, that, that's when I started being trying to be better than other people or as good as other people? I, I can't enjoy games unless I'm winning, like in some sort of competitive aspect. That's like what it is for me. It's, it's all it's ever been since I was like MLA 10 playing Call of Duty and being your typical like console edgelord kid just playing shooters and whatnot all the way, which moved up to like StarCraft, to League of Legends, to CSGO, and now we're in Path of Exile and all this stuff. And it's just, the, the, like, the only reason I, like, really have fun with these games is usually for the uh, competition. Yeah, I think, uh, same thing for me. They like, started pretty early with, like, all the lands and stuff, playing and winning in Unreal tournaments and uh, and stuff like that. And it was always, like, a lot of fun. And I remember going to, like, a LAN party in Norway, playing uh, CSGO, accidentally throwing an aid on my entire team and getting kicked off the team. But yeah, I've already like very <laughs> early enjoyed a lot of competitive events. And uh, I think Heroes in New Earth was like the first time I got sponsored to play and I like, picked up by a team. And uh, yeah, it just continued. And then PoE, I specifically remember why I got into like racing competitively because it was the um, it was a Malachi Merciless kill for an Alienware laptop. And I didn't have a chance in hella winning, so I was so slow. It took me like 10, 12 hours to do the campaign. But I thought it was so cool that like I could be racing at the same time as all these people, like Angry Weasel and Rise QT and Carve, etc. And I, I was and Hellman. Yeah, uh, and Hellman was the guy who uh, actually reached Malachi first, but he didn't claim yeah, the laptop. I remember. Yeah, yeah. And then Morris <laughs> is sitting there. I bet he's dying right now, and he just got one bopped. Um, and I thought that was so cool that. There wasn't any other game, I feel, that gave that same feeling as Path of Exile, where you can race, like, literally in the same game, right? You're, you're in the same game at the same time as the best people, whether you are competitive or not. And I think that's a very special feeling that no other game gives. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a lot harder, at least I feel for me, to be competitive while trying to organize races. But I uh, do still enjoy racing and, and trying to play. You feel, do you feel less motivated to win if you're the one that's put up money yes. for the prize pool? Like Almost like you don't want to because it feels like other than winning my own money, it should go to mm. other people because you're the organizer? Well, I mean, especially lately, it's been more sponsored money than my own. Uh, in the past, it was like very heavily fronted by me. But yes, that is definitely part of it. 
like you probably noticed that I only do like 12, 14 hours in the gold net instead of like doing like 25, 30 hour pushes. And I think it's it's a little bit I do put on events because I want to compete and win in them too. But it's also at the back of my mind, like, what if I do win money in my own event? Are people gonna be pissed? Because people are asking every 10 seconds if I can win. So yeah, no, it's it's definitely a hard one. It does help like not make me push as hard. Hmm. Does does anyone else put on events anymore? Yeah, there's the Blitz ones that Havoc does um, in softcore. No, no, no. There's several. There's uh, Havoc does. Uh, isn't that? The, I think the Blitz is hardcore. Yeah, it's, I think the, the uh, HTSSF this time around. I don't know. It yeah. Might have been softcore right. before. Okay. It was just yeah. the team event with softcore because it, it you really can't do hardcore team events. It's uh, not a good environment. Yeah. So the team event was softcore, and so Havoc does races. You have Brittle Knee does events and races, and you also have Badger. Um, I think that's like the main stuff going on at the moment. And uh, Brittle Knee just got uh, PoE into all games done quick as well, so that should be really interesting. Yeah, I heard about that. There was always this, this problem with awesome games done quick was always that they only did offline runs, like they only yeah. would make uh, speed runs happen for games that could be played offline and GGG was never really able to provide an offline version or not willing I mean I could certainly see problems with that like just providing your full game unrestricted to yeah. somewhere and it could be leaked and modified yeah, so that's definitely a scary thought now. yeah I heard that in the light of COVID that there was something changed that they do, they do the runs remotely anyway and that's yeah. why online games are allowed I, that's what I just scooped off, uh, scooped up on Twitter. No idea, no actual research on that topic. But I'm super hyped to hear that, and I was actually really hyped to see that. Yeah, no, I think it's really cool. That one seems super interesting. Yeah, so there, so there are other events that I'm, that. I'm hoping to make more. I would love to do either a short race season, and ideally something for everybody. I really want to work hard on try to get something where. Um, similar to the old race system where like everybody could gain points. So even if you're like Baylor Mage and you're very, very slow at racing, you can like play alongside and compete and gain points towards something. And uh, you can, yeah, I think that would be cool. It's really, really hard to do. So I might have to start out with something with, you know, only like top racers, like top 200 or something first and grow it from there because it's a, a pain to organize. But let's see. So, so this, um, the gaunt loop that just happened. This is the first time a gauntlet has happened, and by halfway through watching it, I've been like, damn, I should have actually competed this time. And I think it's because it was class events instead mm. of... Because, like, I keep seeing the gauntlet come up, and you know I get asked in chat like 300 times in the week leading up, are you going to do the gauntlet? Are you going to do the gauntlet? And I'm, I was never going to do it. Because I'm like, I'm just nowhere near the top. Like, there's a, there's a handful of people, maybe five or ten people, one of them is going to win it every time. Like, that is that is the group. They're going to win. Someone in there is going to win. Now, with the class thing, it's sort of like, well, all I have to do is have a look at what the top races are competing with because they're even more likely to compete with each other because that's more fun. And they're all going to pick the fastest thing because they want to come first overall. And it leaves all this other area open. It leaves Scion, which is something that is, you think you do, you don't. <laughs> like the Scion class was just a graveyard of misery. Like uh, I think Pack had like forty characters. It's just, it, it it's not good. It's n no nobody had fun there. <laughs> okay, so don't pick Scion, but I can still go with something else. Well, I mean, I would say like in the gauntlet, pretty much everything was competitive. Like you had at least one top racer for almost every class. Um, so it is it is very very hard. Obviously, people do die in the gauntlet. So it does open up for more room. Um, and I would people love dive. to see, like, maybe in a few years with a bigger prize pool and more people involved, like, especially more, like, top racers involved, I would love to one time do an Ascendancy Gauntlet. But we're not really at the stage where we can do that right now because, A, it's a pain to organize, and, B, uh, it would spread the prize pool very thin. But once we start getting prize pools more like one hundred to $500,000, um, that becomes a lot more viable. Oh, and that's something that, that you're already that realistically thinking numbers. about. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really want to have, by the end of 2021, ideally, I want to have done a price pool over 100000 or 
at least by 22. Nice. That's gonna that's gonna that's gonna up, up people's interests a lot. Yeah, I mean, I plan to do events for a long time and uh, pushing pretty hard on that. And um, Shopify has helped like a large amount there because now we are talking to the like, more sponsors and more people are getting interested. Uh, other orgs and stuff are like talking about getting involved in the scene and stuff. So it's it's opened up a lot yeah. because getting events started in Path of Excel was a massive pain in the ass. Like you have no idea how bad it was because early on we still had like very, very good numbers and we were offering to like, you know, Baylor Mages competitive event, right? We can name the entire league after a sponsor. We can we can have it everywhere. Most streamers would put it in their name too, right? Because most people are pretty supportive and want to help the scene. So it's like loads of great exposure for the event, which in other yep. in other events they would pay like easily twenty to fifty thousand for the numbers we were bringing, and uh, we we were only asking for three thousand dollars. And we got a reply once: Would you like some headsets or some mice? And I'm like, bro. <laughs> and then that was actually the the shaper event that i ended up funding i used like between like two and five thousand dollars on on like the price pool and organizing it because i was like there's there, i just i'm not i'm not like doing that for like some fucking headsets free merch no thanks yeah <laughs> well that that's a really important i mean that's maybe goes beyond the spot uh, the the scope of this podcast but that's a really important factor in like content creation and independent yeah, doing your own business kind of thing is not selling yourself under price and knowing your price. Yeah, for sure. So it's it's been really good. It was actually very lucky with Shopify because they reached out. Um, Chris from Shopify messaged me on Twitter and was like, hey, we want to get more involved with racing. We feel like you're like the person to talk to. Can we have a meeting? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Now they're shitposting my chat every day. <laughs> <laughs> and... It was extra refreshing because when talking to so many sponsors, some have been like, oh, Path of Excel is too gory. We really don't know if sponsors would be okay with this. And first of all, that makes me really happy that Path of Excel removed the dead babies from the starting zone because that would probably not be very welcome to sponsors. Uh, I think they got mm. removed in like 2018. Um, but yeah, like they're like, oh, it's too gory. And they're like wondering how the seasons work. Like, why do you take a huge dip in viewership every three months? And and that's another thing. They care a lot about like my individual channels. Viewership too is very important for organizing things like that. So that's helped a lot. But um, the the refreshing thing with Shopify, when I started explaining PoE to them, they were like, oh no, like we, we farm Awakener and Hardcore every every league. We know. So that was great. That that would be very helpful. <laughs> yeah. Having someone who actually already knows the game. Like, oh right, okay. All right. Yep, I get it. Yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. I've, so we heard so much from you from the side of organizing these things. Uh, Daki, do you want to talk a little bit about what goes into preparation on the the racer side? Because what people just see is that huge tip of the iceberg, right? The the, the success and the and the wins that you brought home in the last couple of gauntlets. And even this time, despite dying, you put on a great show and got a really high position in the end. Uh, but you must be practicing a lot for this sort of stuff, right? At least at some point, or does it just come naturally? Uh, this past one, it wasn't quite as much because I already knew what the meadow was going to be beforehand. So it was more lax. It was like I did one 52 hour run over the course of like 15 days. So like, you know, four or five hours a day, just playing a dude just to basically just see how the, the, the build felt because in heist we played ground slam and ground slam's damage is more front loaded so you kill things like instantly whereas eq is delayed so i just wanted to see like how that safety difference was going to be and it really wasn't it didn't matter at all fortifies op so we just I, I just did like one run just to see how it went and me and like quantric and karn all played on the same thing and we like shared fragments and stuff to make it easier to do bossing and it was pretty chill but in the past gauntlets when the meta wasn't so defined it was like 50 to 100 hours of just path of building just like trying to figure out like what really is going to be, be the best here and almost all, all the time it is worthless because you have like one build that you're like pretty certain you're gonna play this and you spend 90 percent of the time figuring out like what could maybe maybe be better but nothing's ever better because it slams
would it take that much? Is, is it such a huge difference or would it not take a lot for other things to be equal or better? Uh, they kind of just need to revert the nerfs to glancing in Zabakwa to kind of bring other things back into viability. Whenever you nerf builds by nerfing defense, it doesn't really... It, it, it's, it's so hard to come back from that because if you can't survive, it doesn't matter if you can do all these cool things to scale your offense because you're just going to die. And that's kind of the problem with like all like the, 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 the Templars. Like Necro can live because Bone Offering is still OP, but with, without having Glancing or Zabakwa, it's just it's so hard to live on a lot, a lot of classes, and, and which is why you just see you just see Fortify scaling as like the primary defense for what, like not Ranger, but uh, for like Duelist and Marauder. How far off uh, right now do you think Necro is from uh, Champion? Like, if you had to put it in like a percent, so, yeah. uh, I, I would use time. I would I would say it's probably about thirty hours off. That long? Yeah, that's wow. further than I would have thought. To do it yeah, with same degree like 20, of safety. 15. Yeah, like you definitely can do Necro like way faster than thirty, but you're gonna have a lot of extra risk. Whereas on Champion, I'm fine going into like T15s at like you know. 19, 20 hours into the league on a necro. If I don't have life on block shield, almost block cap, and like uh, trigger, I, I'm not doing that because you might just die randomly. Yeah, no, that that's fair. Like yeah. it is insane how powerful it is getting like comfortable and feeling safe that early. Because like I didn't want to do uh, slams, so I went for necro and like yeah, like you said, like I spent so much time farming like trigger and I got stuck in like white maps trying to farm like the vigil and stuff like that because mm -hmm. that's the only way I would get. I hate that jewel so much, but it's, it's yeah. mandatory. Yeah, so no, for sure. I I feel like you do probably lose up to thirty hours just keep being stuck in the early game. Once you come fully online, it's like very competitive, but mm -hmm. takes like, a while. I think it's it's probably better. Like if if you look at like Steel's character. When he actually was bossing with like you know twenty five thousand life and fortify and all of his like double block like like block shield, that character's not dying. It, it's almost impossible. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, that's true. I I wouldn't have thought it would be that far behind. I knew it was a little bit behind, but I would have. Yeah, slams are. I, would, I wouldn't have thought thirty hours. I mean, I, in my practice run, I, I had to kill like six or seven shapers, and it was still like fifty one hours of playtime. Whereas. Necro, it, it's just so scary. It's, I don't know, man. I, I don't know how to live with, without Fortified Molten Shell in Gauntlet Mods. You can just get popped around and things. Like, if you watched the yeah. uh, Rise had one death that was just, it was beautiful. He walked up a ramp with like 14,000 life and died to a single cannibal, a single one. Three projectiles with sub biz, dead instantly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't balk. It sucks. Yeah, it's insane. That, that was a very brutal death, too, because that was like, I, I would say that's like a perfect storm where there was nothing he could have done because they hit like a, a wall right next to him and it barely even plays an animation. The only thing he could have done to avoid that rip would just be don't do maps with cannibals, yep. which that's what you is should do. arguably an OK strategy. It depends really on the, uh, the, the terrain of the map. If it's like a toll or something, I don't really care what the multip is, but anytime there's yeah. gaps in elevation, cannibals become extremely dangerous. And Legion. Both of those yeah. can like shock off the ground and it's, it's not good. And also I would say like maps that have like a lot of gaps or easy places to get stuck. Like every time I got cannibals in primordial blocks, I was like, you know what? Is it worth dying <laughs> no, for this map? No, it's probably no, no. not. So I would just <laughs> you leave. Every time. It was like, uh, remember Garatha's death in, uh, in mineral pools to cannibals? Like, yeah. He, he ports over a gap and then like clicks something and there's like 30 things already in the air. Like he, he, <laughs> he died like two minutes ago when he didn't port out when he saw cannibals. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's insane, but it's so much fun. And and we do get a lot of people will be asking like, oh, Ziz, what about banning something? And I don't feel like banning something ever, ever does help. Ban like cannibals. Moving it. Yeah, ban cannibals. cannibals. Yeah. But like if you ban, Bans for example, good. champion, then then it's just necro, right? Which is that much further above something else. Well, if you um, ban champion, it's slayer. And then if you ban slayer, then it's probably like raider, still slams. And then if you ban raider, then it's marauder. Yeah. And then I think it's Templar Inquisitor slams, which is not bad. Right, but I meant but more like good. even if I ban slams, then it would just go to necro, right? It, yeah. You don't really it create defaults. any more build diversity. And then if you ban necro, then no one's killing yeah. bosses. That's gonna be so scary. Pretty much, except that raider. Mm. That was so impressive. That was so cool. I really wasn't expecting raider to be 
one of the classes till I fully finish. I was expecting, uh, I was expecting that it would be um, like uh, Duelist, Witch, and uh, Shadow. I thought Shadow would have done it. Yeah, I didn't the expect was Greater. Archmage, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He, he was Archmage by Fall by Boss, and he changed to uh, yeah. Cremation for Uber Terry, I believe, just to dodge yeah. easier. Uh, it's definitely a good build, but uh, ZDPS. It was like an 18 minute maven, I think. It was a lot. It was very so, yeah. You, you have to be very comfortable with bossing to do that kind of stuff. It's super safe mapping. Like, dying on a raider is almost impossible mapping, but then you get to the bosses and your damage sucks, and you have to be very good. How much harder is the maven fight? Because I actually, unfortunately, didn't get to the maven fight in Gauntlet, and I haven't played my practice run that far. I actually did quite well. So many people died in Gauntlet this time. I actually. On second day, I made it into the top 100, and I died at rank 74, but not before I talked to Ashabi accidentally, and then I was like, off. Oh, that kind of dropped all the motivation for me. Why well, fight progress? Yeah. That's rough, man. <laughs> no, it's, it's terrible. I should have practiced for that. It's just, I knew that that was going to happen. I, I called it before, and it's just talking to chat and brain AFKing the game, and then seeing that giant exclamation mark hover, it's just, it's triggering. You want to click it. Hard. Not. Yeah. 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 Maven and the Gauntlet is uh it really depends on your build. So in general, any build that's fighting Maven at that point can face tank her barrage. And if you can't, it's a lot harder. And if you can, like that ability doesn't do much more damage. Her standstill still doesn't matter. Like Maven's abilities are very weak. It, it's like the brain becomes like insane in the gauntlet. It, it, in base league Maven, he has to cast, I think, two or three of like the like volleys of balls before uh, the volatiles happen, and in the gauntlet every single time because of multi proj, there's enough in, in the arena to, for her to cast that ability, and then you have to dodge like all the volatiles while dropping degens at the same time, and Ooh. that overlap can kill you very easily. It's what killed Waggle in the actual uh, ritual league start because you need to drop the degens well and you need to also pop the volatiles while not dying to the volatiles, and it's just like kind of scary. But if you get through like to the last phase, it's it's still the same fight and it's pretty free. But the brain phase, the brain phase is just so much RNG. Like if you get bad bosses, the brain phase yeah. is like completely insane. And if you get good, like good bosses, it's not even a phase. It's, it's just a huge one flip. And then the gauntlet, like the criteria of what makes it a, a bad boss is a lot. Uh, a lot more projectile focused. <laughs> yeah. I mean, multi proj can just do some really dumb things. Like whenever you get uh, like foundry boss in there, like say in like everything in PUE except for like two encounters, Minus 20 Chaos Res is totally fine. You're never going to die because of that on a champion with, with Fortify. But then the Foundry boss comes out with multi proj monster damage and it's going to hit you for like 30k because that one boss is just insane. So if it spawns, you have to be like, do I leave? Do I not? Do I form another set? And then there's Tolman, which, you know, Rise met Tolman this league. Right. Tolman's, Tolman's not fun. Yeah, anything with like Corpse Explosion is so much scarier because of the extra monster life. And yeah, everything is scary in Gauntlet, I guess. Yep. Any corpse explode the bosses? The boss corpses linger for one second after they die, and Tolman's DD is instant, so you die if you kill a boss on you, yeah. Or if you're oh. if you're DD and you spawn like a crush claw on yourself, you die. Yeah, it's great. Oh, that's oh. terrible. Yeah, I don't like Tolman at all. I, I I feel like Tolman's like the last bastion of instant DD. They're probably gonna fix it eventually. Will they though? Probably. I mean, you remember the days of totems, which instant eating, eating, eating bosses? Like, yeah. Yep. I, I died to it several times. The worst yeah. part about totems was that I had a, a screen and a half range, so you couldn't even see them sometimes. <laughs> yep. Yep. You should know yeah, the, if they come the in from there. the wrong angle, they just pop you before you even know there's a totem. Yeah. Right. I, mean, I think they'll fix it eventually, but it's it's probably not like a priority because like there is technically like an animation for the, the DD relic following you around, so you can see that and react to that, but it's still, it, it, doesn't, it never feels good to die to DD. Yeah. I think I feel like it's fair though in the map where where Tolman is in the boss room, but it's just in Maven it shouldn't be. Yeah, right. Just but like even, the race even in the map, you have the same thing that if you are a DD Inquisitor and you spawn in Crush Claw, you still die even in the map probably. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah, like for any map. deep D build, yeah. yeah. Crush Claws are big. And like, didn't um didn't Alira used to DD as well? She still does, and but they got it, rid of it, it from it, her. It, it's just it, delayed. Yeah, she'll like spawn oh, like a circle on the ground, yeah, and does. every corpse that's uh, inside that circle will DD after, yeah. I don't know, four seconds, three seconds. It's very slow. 
And it has that very yeah. visual pillar effect, just like uh, the the DDs from the Stygians, right? Yes, yeah. but it, it does very little damage compared to the Stygians. It, it, like, you, you can tank hers and it's fine. I, I don't even think it's Percept Race anymore, if I had to guess, based on how little damage it does. Whereas oh, the Stygians... Wow. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, they, they kill. <laughs> I've died to them a lot. Yeah, I, I, I just watched your last death to them like a few days ago, just going through the old like rip VOD compilations and uh, yeah, it's rough. You just die instantly. It's so especially bad because if you get them at the start of the map and you haven't seen that there's Stygians there yet, like there's so much like visual clutter in PoE, it's just really hard to see anything. Yeah. I still want to be able to have an effect slider. Yeah. I would love to be only able to see dangerous stuff. That would be great. Yep. <sighs> or even just generally 20% of everything instead of 100% of everything. And yeah. I, would, I would still feel better. That's, that's the next step. Like, we have an item filter. Now we need an effect filter. <laughs> oh, man. I would Monster so mod filter. <laughs> <laughs> because honestly, like back when we started playing the game, it made sense that you had to read the monsters mods in order to know how dangerous they are. But now at the game, at the, the pace the game is played, it makes no sense anymore. You don't have time to read half the monsters mods. I, I yeah. still hover every single rare that I ever see just to check. Just is that powerful crits? Is it? Because I mean, a, a, a rare can be like insane. Yeah. Yeah. There's like the the variance in damage a rare can do based on mods that don't even have aura like aura effects is is insane. Like if if it has like extra damage from a crits multi prod or something, it's just it's just doing ten times more damage because you got unlucky on, on the mods that are rolled. Yeah, though, like even in the gauntlet, both me and Steel died to powerful crits. He got like auto attacked by um by a crab, and I got flame dashed by a ball foam. Flame. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> Fucking flame dashed. It looks like flame dashed. That's what I'm gonna call it. I, I don't think it would have been possible to build a temple with more damage mods than you had in that clip, though. <laughs> like literally every <laughs> single room was like T3 damage mods. It was like minus max crit, two extra damages, element monster damage. It was it was everything. Yeah. So I also actually didn't even know what room gave crit until that temple. It's I shouldn't weapons. even have done it. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. So you found out when you zoned in, they were like, "Oh, it's gonna be fine." Yeah, because I thought it was such a low temple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. I died to this once in Incursion League itself, and I, I've been so paranoid of them ever since. E even yeah. on temples with like no mods, I'm just I'm just terrified of those guys. It's so scary. Like the thing is, I was just doing one room. Like it was just one room <laughs> I was gonna check for Dapper Prodigies, and I was like, it's not like I'm doing the boss. It's not like I'm doing Legion in here or anything. And it's like such a low level temple, so I'll be fine doing the armor room. I wasn't. I wasn't fine. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <Yeah. laughs> I thought I was gonna be fine when I did a heist in, in Gauntlet. Shouldn't have. I wanted the <laughs> currency, but I was like level seventy one heist can't be that bad. What was it? The Templar heist? I actually don't remember exactly which one it was. I think it was the one. Yeah. Yeah. It was. The Templars have a unique boss called a security specialist, which has like a lightning charge dash, which, you know, it's conversions of gauntlet mods make it insane. It's like, yep. it, it's like one of the few things nice that can actually like kill champions and it's, it's, it's spooky. Hmm. I feel like heist, even without gauntlet mods is one of the rippiest places to be at. Not so much Heist's anymore. Time. It really it's depends on the damage thing. type of your build. Like on like the ground slammers, it it was so safe because you instantly kill everything. But then if things live and heist, they do they do a lot of damage. Mm. Fair enough, yeah. Yeah, that was the problem. I didn't kill the things before they killed me. Yep. Typical PoE death. Were you playing cat? I was also DD Necro. That was on the first yeah. character. Still, like I mean, the first that made it pack past Act One. I died a couple of times in Act One, but then surprisingly didn't <laughs> die at all. Until I made that stupid call. But at that point, I'd already ruined my league by talking to Ashabi, so I wasn't even super mad about the death. <laughs> I was just super <laughs> mad afterwards about the decision. Sorry, uh, just the decision that I didn't migrate all out of the league. That was the most stupid thing I did. But I was protesting against that stupid Ashabi click mechanic that shouldn't even have been in the game. And I'm kind of semi mad that GGG didn't hotfix it by either making it available to everyone or disabling it for everyone by making it so a if you talk to her then you'll still get the notification or if you didn't talk to her 
then you don't get it either. But I, 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 can't, I don't like these little binary, stupid things. Yeah. But no, I am. I I was kind of expecting them to hotfix it, but I guess they're pretty busy with a lot of stuff. So, and I mean, at least the gauntlet was a fresh start for everybody, so everybody had it, unless you misclick. Yeah, yeah. Everyone had a chance to not click her. That's true. Yeah. Yep. Fair chance. It would have been really, really bad. Imagine if you literally had to make a new account to play. That yeah. would have been terrible. So, so I know with that thing that if you don't talk to a. It just shows you a notification when you enter a map. Can you still get your Shabi fight if you haven't talked to her? Yeah. Yes. You can. All right. And you yeah. don't actually lose the notification by doing your Shabi fight. Oh, okay. Is that saying like, there's actually just two Ashabis then? Yeah, yeah. She she just stands in there with her exclamation mark. Right? <laughs> yeah, she's just chilling there the whole time. Yeah. Right. I haven't seen it, I just heard about it. <laughs> so if that if that stays, then I have to remember to not click on the whole next league. Yeah. Chat told oh, me that I'd be super upset. Gone. I'd be super upset if that's not gone next league. That that's such a stupid thing. Yeah, it, it's like ninety nine percent gone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I would be very surprised if it stayed. It's so strong, it, and it doesn't seem like that hard of a thing to to fix either. I mean, you probably just you can't remember, like delete the quest. It doesn't really need to exist anymore. It doesn't yeah. matter though. Like next thing, like would you even enter a harvest? Like it's basically dead, right? You can't even craft with it anymore. I hope everybody thinks that I'm gonna make so much money. I hope I hope people are all over TFT being like, I'll sell this craft for ten C. I just you just <laughs> need so many exalts to craft in three point fourteen. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. X price is gonna be a lot higher. If they kill Valdos, it's it's actually gonna be really rough to get that many exalts. I'm not even sure the best method of grinding, but. I need exalts. I need like a hundred exalts. Maybe a thousand. Yeah, I need all of them. Yeah, no, I it's like I think what really time. like tilted me. Like, there's so many people that actually think you can't use harvest on influence items anymore, like at all. And I'm like, yeah, oh. yeah. There's so many people like, well, how are you gonna like? I was showing off like some of the influence ways you can still craft, and they're like, oh, but you can't use harvest on influence gear at all, sis. And I'm like, yes, you can. <laughs> but you yeah. just can't all go on influenced items, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So you can't you can't org caster and get your free curse on your chest. Yep. But you can add influence and get a one in three chance for curse, and or then re roll like, suffixes over and over again until you get it. Just little pre prefixes can't be changed. Caster reforge. Yeah, guaranteed. Yep. Yep. It's a pretty good assault thing. Yep. I like the more I looked into it, the more it looked like I was going to end up using fossils, metamorph. Uh, metamods and like everything. Like I, I was going to use harvest metamorphs, metamods, and fossils to craft next league instead of just harvesting everything, which is definitely interesting. But I, I don't. I, as soon as you guys mentioned it, I'm like, how do you get that many exalts in solo self found? Because like I know I'm going to use a lot. It really just depends on the volume stuff. Like everyone kind of thinks they're going to nerf it, but I mean they they haven't said they will yet, and it's possible that that they don't. And if we still have Valdos, then you can farm like four to five exalts a day pretty easily, just grinding loads of your Valdos. I think Valdos is such yeah. a performance problem; they have to tune it down in some way. Yeah, I kind of feel like they're gonna like they separate the harbingers, like do something to like make it so there's still a lot of harbingers, but they're not all in one spot. It'd be Which good if they kept at the same amount and it was just like there'll be ten harbingers over the course of the map instead of. Here's a group of 10 on top of you. That would be okay, because then you still get the same amount out of it, right? They yeah, could just. It's a, lot, it's a lot more time, though. They could reduce the amount of monsters from the Harbingers by a factor of 10 and then increase the rewards from the Harbinger by a factor of 10, because there's no reason it needs to be the best for both XP and currency. The, the XP is actually insane. Like, even in Gauntlet, yeah. like 1 to 94 in like 20 hours, like it's, it's so much XP if you can survive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I just think the difference is too big before between a, a bad performing PC and a good performing PC on that. Because you can't survive if you have a bad PC. It was <laughs> so even it's worse than like, things like Proxima. Like, I actually thought the way Proxima worked was that you got 50% more crafts. And you don't. It's just more monsters. Like, I don't understand how that mm. got put in the game compared to Haywork Hamlet. Like, that's so insane to me. Uh. Hmm. 
because it's right, literally it's just like more... no 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 you yeah. don't get more cuffs at all do you get more life force i mean that's not relevant for the current version of harvest but yeah, maybe that's matter they anymore. thought it might have been because it's I still literally like, never used that zone i just i had just assumed that you would get more crafts in there but less gardens if you found a garden you would get way more crafts in it that's what i thought was going on there. i just never went there yeah like for example like ventura initially like pitched me like oh you'll get more influence crafts in um in proxima but you don't really you get one more field like that's useful and sometimes like if you do take the like don't wither like you do get it but you don't get more like blister lords or anything so it's mm -hmm. like the 11% chance in proxima versus the 10% chance in haywire mm -hmm. and the the bad thing about if you are getting a blister lord in proxima you're more likely to get uh, add influence to weapon because that's the most common one. Whereas like armor, jewelry, or on anything, you're more likely to get in Haywire. Hmm. Uh, that leads really well into all these new passives that we've got for our Atlas trees. Do we expect them to change League to League like they changed the Atlas? Like, do we think that we're going to shuffle them around or balance them or move them? I, I'm expecting a large amount of changes. I'm expecting probably, probably a big shuffle. I'm expecting uh, Valdos to get butchered. I'm very surprised Valdos made it in the game at all. Just based on... They've said that they don't even like when streamers turn down the graphics because they want their game to look pretty. And there's, I, I mean, unless they have some sort of secret technology that managed to run Valdos smoothly, like there's no computer that when Valdos pops up max amount of Harbingers isn't just like grinding to a halt. I feel like that whole thing's yeah. been out of the window for a while now. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I, at this league, I even had to go back from Vulcan to DX11 because it just, I just didn't, it just didn't perform. It got weird little hiccups, especially with the Desecrate and the DD. Mm -hmm. It just didn't work in Vulcan for me. And uh, I, I really love dynamic, uh, dynamic lighting, the lighting feature. What was it called? Global Illumination. Mm. That, that one's so good, but I haven't been able to play with it for like a year now. I remember that <laughs> I was so, super proud when I got this PC in 2018 and I was able to play in 1440p details everything more than 60 fps most of the time and that was before i got a separate pc for the stream and now i have the separate pc for the stream and the game performs worse with worse settings and i really don't want to hate on the game because i love it but that it just it's killing me inside the the fact that i feel like if i don't upgrade my pc this year i may not be able to continue playing this game at least not yeah. not as much as i like to so yeah does it, does everyone play on Vulcan? I do, yeah. I, I can't anymore. I, I did for uh, I think it was Heist Launch and then halfway yeah. through the league it like my game just crashed and if I ever try to set up the Vulcan, it just instantly crashes. And oh, I, I think it I think it is fixed now, but I haven't bothered to go back to Vulcan because DX eleven is like fine for me. Like I, I can't do like Delirium Volta packs, but I wouldn't do that anyways, even if it you know performed. Yeah, for me, Vulcan was a pretty big game changer. Uh, I was having, like, ever since Delirium, I was having, like, really, really bad performance issues where I couldn't even play the game. And then once I switched to Vulcan, it was, like, night and day. Like, So I can't even run Vulcan anymore. Um, I, I League start on Vulcan, but it's perform the performance on Vulcan is so garbage. I have to change to DX because... Once I get into things like 100% Delirious maps and whatnot, which I do relatively regularly because I'm a pleb softcore trade player. But Vulcan can't handle that. No matter, it doesn't matter what computer you've got. It doesn't, Vulcan can't handle that. It's got nothing to do with the computer. It just, Vulcan will shit itself. It can't do it. Yeah. You have to go to DirectX. So I just leave it on DirectX most of the time because... I like Vulcan better. It looks the whole game looks better, and it runs better when there's nothing on the screen and barely anything going on. But as soon as stuff gets complicated, Vulcan shits the bed, and then you have to go back to DX, which is and turn off sounds, which is a whole nother thing. 
that I don't actually understand at all. But if you turn off sounds, you get a way better performance. Somehow. Yeah. I've always uh, wondered why that is, too. <laughs> I really like the sounds, though, and especially with the uh, DMCA stuff. And Most people not even playing music on stream nowadays anymore, other than game music or in-game, I feel like. Yeah. Switching of the sounds completely would take away so much from the game. I really yeah. love the voice lines. Like I like to listen to instrumental gaming music in the background, and just all the voice lines are so cool. And there's Especially music in Cassia. the background. Oh, that's terrible, dude. That's the worst. Yeah, you also just die to things if you can't hear them coming. Like there's yeah. so many important sound cues yeah. that you yeah. it's really not really an option to turn off sound. Yeah, yeah whenever I see somebody mandatory. do like rock without sound and die, I'm like, like why? Like same with Baran. Like why not have sound on? Like why I pop dialogue to Mac? Yeah, that's that's weird because I feel like it's almost mandatory to have sounds off because I'm not in hardcore anymore. <laughs> But you're right, like I at least once or twice a week I die to something I should have heard but never saw. But if I had sounds on, I'd have heard it coming. Yeah. But it does happen at least once or twice a week. But I can't play that extreme mapping level with sounds on because the client can't do it. You gotta turn them off. You got drop sounds on? No. You've got I got only loot filter sounds, that's it. Yeah, that, that's what I mean, drop sounds. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Everything else is turned off. I don't like it because I really, really like the sounds of the game. Like, I like the combat. I have to not hear Shatter anymore. Oof. In a build that runs around 100% delirious, like 18,000 mobs in a map shattering everything. And I have to not hear that beautiful sound. <laughs> because otherwise, I, I can't kill things. It's sound related and I don't know why. Yeah, no, it's huge. I love Shatter. I used to only play a build if it had shatter in it, and now I haven't played a shatter build in like years because <laughs> they, they just kind of don't fit anymore. Like, free spells, totems are gone, like, spell casting is kind of rough. If you're playing like fizz spells, you're converting to fire, not cold, usually, in hard, hardcore at least. And like, the whole like archetype of uh, like, like, uh, just bow builds and stuff, it's all kind of just kind of gone for the most part. So hard to scale, so shatters, shatters gone. Feels bad. Yeah. At least like the um the obliteration effect sounds pretty nice as well. It yeah, does, but it's not the same. It's, it's not shatter. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty close. Not not quite, but it's still satisfying. It's nice to have. Yeah, it's like like bubble foil. You can pop the bubbles. Pew! It makes a yeah, nice sound. Pretty much. Very satisfying. Um, but other than uh, Valdos, to loop back to that topic, do you think that there are things that really need to be changed? Assuming that they're not planning to do a big shuffle with Atlas passes, what do you think would really benefit from a buff or a nerf on the Atlas passives? As aside from Valdos, obviously, because yeah, that's, it's just too good for returns and too good for levels and too bad for performance. I kind of hope they just delete every single harvest passive from the tree and don't put it anywhere, just so that harvest is like equalized across the entire Atlas. Is it even in three point fourteen? Harvest is still going to be by far the best way to craft like any gear in the game, and if you have a way to target it, it's like almost mandatory to target it, and that just kind of feels bad. I I would love harvest wing a harvest wing to be put in the center tree. Yeah. So you can decide work. I want to go for harvest or I don't want to go for harvest, but then you can still do whatever map you want to do. Yeah, that could work. I, I definitely agree. Like, I didn't like that Harvest was so, like, mandatory to farm for. And I mean, it's still, like, if you do remove it like that, then you're going to have a lot of people doing things like Jungle Valley, right? Where you're just running through and sprinting. Okay, there's no Harvest here. You're leaving. Don't even kill that much. So that that is a big mm. problem with Harvest, is that it feels like other things aren't uh, worth it. And I think that was one of the major problems with Ritual. I felt like Ritual was a really, really good league, but it got like uh, dented a bit by other things because if I'm doing a Ritual, I'm actively getting less Harvest just because I'm stuck so long in these Rituals, right? But other than that, like Ritual, I think for me, was one of the best. It was probably the best league for your first character. I think it like, felt really, really good pretty much my entire first character, uh, mm -hmm. even, even up to Red Maps. 
Um, but then on my second character onwards, I was like, now I'm feeling like a little bit punished. Like I'm not like getting more progression towards like Awakener. I'm not getting like I'm I'm losing a lot yep. of things by doing yep. that. But spending yep. twice as much time per map. Yeah. It, yeah. It returns back to feeling good again when you've a hundred percent completed completion. Like everything's done. When you, you all of your maps are unlocked and everything. And when you go to like juicing juicing maps in Softcore. All that juice that lands near the ritual also gets sucked into the ritual and done again and then moved on to the next one and then moved on to the next one. And yeah. so even when you're like doing proper juiced maps, it just makes the rituals even juicier. I feel like my rituals still gave like so little. Like I, I did a few, like not quite hundred percent. It was like like three to four uh, orbs, like low tier arcades mm -hmm. to try to grind some uh some some uniques. And you you pop an incursion and see like you know 30, 40 uniques pop out. And then I do a ritual on the arcade boss with like the vessel that I pulled from it was like 192 guys and I get two uniques from it. It's like it's the actual like loot mm -hmm. from rituals felt like so bad, like, yeah. like the loot on the ground. The rewards from like, you know, buying with the ritual currency was really good. But like the mobs that spawn a ritual just felt like so unrewarding to me and it never like, I don't know, I just didn't, didn't like it that much. Yeah, they can definitely like work like on that, the scaling. Did you like the idea of buying the reward you wanted with currency you earned instead of just having a massive loot explosion? I think that's fine. I mean, I think the biggest problem I had with Ritual was just that it was like a minute of just standing still and the whole genre is about going fast and finding ways to go faster. And then it's like you're just stuck in a cage fighting mobs that spawn four at a time. Like yep. Ritual with vessels felt really good. I liked it a lot. But... Yep. If you don't have vessels in, it was just too slow. And I, I just, I couldn't deal with it. I would personally love to see Ritual become a pre-map mechanic. Like, that's probably what Harvest should have been. Um, but uh, I I, have, I think it felt, it was probably the best feeling League mechanic for early on, except Delirium. <clears throat> I remember doing it like at level 8 and I got like 5 transmutes. I was like, wow, this is huge. Like That's yeah. all the transmutes I need for the next 15 levels. Um, and I, I would say like most league mechanics feel extremely bad early on. Like if you're doing it at level like eight or 10, like you're either like super overwhelmed or you're not getting any loot back or it's just slowing you down. Whereas doing a ritual here and there while leveling on my first character was huge. Yeah. I think the only thing that feels as good as ritual early is essences. Yes. And not always. even always. I, I just want two essences early so I can yeah. make rare rings so I can make the craft to craft. That's it. Yeah. Let's be honest. If essences didn't drop essences and they just dropped alks, you'd be just as happy while leveling. You don't know, it is it's just an alk. I don't sure. know. I really like essences. You get a woe or something for a spellcaster early on, you hit it nicely if you're not like crafting. I, I like that. Our contempt for your nice little fizz weapon. That's so yeah. good. As soon as you have four alts. I never level fizz, so I can see that working. But as caster leveling, I like I just care about making my rings rare, so I can. Yeah, that's it. This is a caster. Like, any is, any like, way so to be. make the ring rare, and but I'm see. I'm good. I see. Even <laughs> then, if I'm a caster and I drop a contempt, I feel that much better about saving my alchemy. Yep. Yeah, that's twenty eight percent resist. That's a good that's good fair. RNG. <laughs> Yeah. For me, it's more like 21. Uh, no, no, we're talking about Benchcraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah 21 to 28. All oh, right. <laughs> Just pick the higher number, though. <laughs> Just be lucky. <laughs> Wait, do you not have the streamer card yeah, yet? I'm, I'm learning from the best. Yeah, I mean, I was... I, I mean, forgot I, I could to even get hit 21. Contact. I'm pretty sure they gave me the reverse them. streamer client. I made sure I'm pretty sure they had to take people RNG <laughs> to give it to streamers, and I think I got the take it side. Like I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like those people when they rub their fuse on the new players and line eyes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that it's happened to me. me in mass. It's... Oh. So, so so you, you're the Aussie counterpart to Steel. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he, that's where all my he's got both of our RNG. <laughs> I was that's stuck calling him greedy mage. He's taken all my RNG. I can see that. It's like it's ridiculous to the point it'll happen every league. There'll be like a craft that's like one in twelve fossils to hit, and it will take me seventy. 
And I'll be like, well, that wasn't profitable, but I swear everyone else should do this. It is profitable. Mathematically, <laughs> it's one in 12, and you only need to hit one in 20 to break even. You should do it. Just don't be me when you do it, and it'll be fine. <laughs> Just don't be Baylor Mage. I tell well, people that a lot. That's, that's good advice. The amount of times I tell people, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> like I promise I'm giving you good information just don't watch me play because I'm bad <laughs> but I'll tell you the right thing <laughs> that's nice <laughs> oh. yeah for the, the rest of the new endgame content maven fights, preparing for them like building up the invitations the new, new endgame gameplay loop do you think there is anything that needs to be addressed there, especially from the perspective of the competitive scene, but also just in general? I think 10 boss encounters need to not be RNG at all. I, like, as soon as you get 10 bosses, give me an invitation every single time. It, it's yeah. fine for the special ones, but it's like insane. Like In the actual league itself, I went from having five extra hair invitations, and then like, you know, 400, 500 maps later, I had none, and then I had to do like thirty maps in a row to get one to drop. And it's like, why? I already have the bosses. Just, just let me, let me play the game, please. Yeah, that was very, very strange. I don't really understand why they did that, unless they were like, oh well, we need to make sure they understand the random moons or RNG. That I, I don't really understand the logic behind that. That was very strange. Yeah. So you, think, you think every tenth one could just drop? It just drops one on the ground. Yep, it should because. Uh, like the way it works for now, for, at least for the 10 boss ones, from my understanding, is that you're supposed to get an invite like one in every 10 maps, at roughly. So you shouldn't ever like need to trade for them. And even if you did trade for them, you still have to witness the bosses to actually use the invitation, which means you should drop an invite. So just just make it always drop an invite. Like there's no like market there for anything. It's just it's just weird. It makes yeah, sense for the, for the special ones, but not for the 10 bosses. Unless it's meant to be rarer. Unless it's unless it's just meant to be, you know, you get bosses. And I mean, then it's never a problem it. except for in events, basically. It's annoying. Mm. It, it and it doesn't serve any purpose, right? It's never a good thing or enjoyable thing. It's just weird and very very confusing. Like especially for like Poe is already a very very um overwhelming and confusing game for new players, and the amount of times I had people come in during the league. And being like, hey, is it bugged? Like, I, I killed all 10 and I have no imitation. I've killed like 15 now and I have no imitation. Am I doing something wrong? And and that doesn't like feel good for the players. And I like normally that's fine if it serves a purpose, but this really doesn't. It doesn't serve a purpose. So All right. That's a very good point. Maybe you can help me here. Do you see the purpose of not unlocking the Citadel once you kill your first tier 3 boss in the middle zones? Or like the fact that you have to go through a portal and click the altar to unlock the citadel. It happened to me so many times that I just oh. missed the portal. I kill the boss, get out of the map, open the next map, and I oh shit, my citadel. Yeah, I I've do that a lot too. too. I mean, that's just yeah. like lore fluff, right? You have to go through the portal. No, it's probably better if you just unlock the citadel instantly. But yeah, no, I thought maybe that was just something that didn't. That didn't reveal itself to me. Maybe there was some no. mechanic that where it makes sense. No, not really. Just um, RP. Yeah, yeah. Right it's basically the, just role playing. Am I right in saying the first time you get a ten way, you get a guaranteed one, or did I just yes, get you lucky twice in a row? You, you just right. Yeah. You do that, now. That you didn't initially. Exactly. They patched that in. Yeah. But but at long that, you didn't. Um. And also another thing that I think would be great, and this is specifically a thing that it doesn't affect Trade League at all, it only affects SSF and events, uh, but being able to change Uber Elder Fragments around with Harvest would be really, really good. Yes, please. And that's actually something I did ask, like, if it's possible to at least get for private leagues and events or, like, just something they could turn on. Um, it probably would just be a healthy thing to have in the game in general, because, again, like, on, on Trade League, you can just trade anyway right they're both the same price so it doesn't really matter um yeah. so well, that a, would be really a very nice. big difference between the two elder fragments and the two shaper fragments though what do you mean well the uh, for uber elder the two shaper fragments are worth one amount and the two elder fragments are worth significantly less 
you could just make the like shaper and elders also work on them and only go between the two instead of yeah. being able to go from like elder to shaper it would just be like flipping them back if and forth if you were going to swap them it would just have to be you could swap the elder one for the other elder one but not yeah. between all yeah. four and no, then that would be fine. fine wouldn't make a difference yeah wouldn't, i think that'd be really affect good. trade at all it would yep. make no difference to us so yeah because that's like it's to the point where in events i kind of don't want to have uber elder there like because it, it like it could end up being RD. it almost was this event it almost was like very R and D with uh, Alc not getting any. Um, he was missing like one shaper fragment or something or one other fragment. So yeah, he had to do like what, how many shapers? He had only killed four when it was at the point where it was like a where I almost finished. Yeah, which is I mean it, that's kind of unlucky, but yeah. Well, okay, just as an idea of how unlucky it can be. So in like I've been playing SSF hardcore and. I have 16 top left fragments in a row. No, 18 now. 18 <laughs> in a row. <laughs> what the hell? I think so, so my like I have 18 top left, 20 top right, 20 bottom right. So they're you're very sh- balanced. You're sure and, you installed that streamer client correctly? I know. I fucked something up. It's insane. Well, no, and he's got the rarer fragment. <laughs> people were having so much fun and calculating the odds and it's just like insane. <laughs> Yeah, that's that is actually that is actually really really yeah. unlikely, and, and that is very unlucky. But if that does happen in an event, that's like really bad. It's the same reason we don't have um like for example, say that you could witness sauna maps. Uh, that's something I also asked if it was possible to get for events. Um, then you could have the cortex in um or sorry, you could have the feared as part of the event, and I think that'd be really cool. Oh yeah, that's that's a really big one. I think people also not just for competitive events. Everyone's been asking that of me, or suggesting that, or telling me that they they find it super frustrating that you can't witness the Zana maps. That Zana should actually have that Maven button as well, so you can witness them. Yeah, for sure. Like the the the, the uh, like retort to that is always that like lore wise, Zana's not, not okay with it. But come on, Zana, I, I don't really care about your lore. Just yeah. Just, Give me the yeah. button. I need it. The problem is like just the only way to target synth maps is like with the watch them mod that makes it so Zana make it gives them more, more more commonly. But then you can't even witness it, so it just kind of just kind of sucks. Yeah, and I mean at least it's like it's pretty it's pretty reliable to get a cortex map in like three or four days through both Zana and drop. But like if you're relying on it just drop, you're screwed. And I I, yep. I do ideally want like. Less RNG is more ideal. That's why we don't have Owl in as well. Um, and it, I think it was pretty fun to not have Delve in for the for the class event. It's probably not going to be like this every time. It depends a little bit on like how many changes they make to the meta. Because if if it's like a huge shakeup in the meta, um, and and you know Necro DD is no longer good, Slammers are no longer good, then we could maybe just do another like global. Uh, gauntlet again because I don't think we are doing a class gauntlet every time. It it will depend a lot on like what they do. Hmm. I'm not allowed to skip the next class one. <laughs> don't skip the next one at all. They're so much fun. Oh. yeah, Ballard, it's only like a week. Oh. I yeah. mean, or two days if you're bad like me. Do you know how long it's been since I played hardcore? Like, but I got like, think, like seven think times about, on my way to maps now. Like, there's I'd... such a large amount of softcore players that have never played hardcore at all, and they like play it and have fun. It is very yeah, refreshing. They do it, so you have to because you have hardcore experience. Get yep. back in there. Yeah, you you were born on softcore, or I mean hardcore. Remember? <sighs> I was. You grew up there. I don't know. I'm getting I'm getting old now. <laughs> Reflexes are not the same. I just I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I'm old now. Yeah, like, but that that's the point where you actually have to actively step in. You have to start doing those crossword puzzles and you have to start doing the, you know, like mental stimulation so that you don't age that fast. Yeah, exactly. You have, you're <laughs> old now. You have experience. Oh, man. Okay, yeah. we'll do the next one. Nice. We'll do it. I said okay. it. I said it. It's it was, on the internet now. 
it was really, really cool that there was literally 20,000, over 20,000 people participating. Like that, that was insane. I thought we would get like 15 to 18. We actually got over 20. What's the new cap? Um, the, the cap is still 10. They experimented for the gauntlet to up it to 20. And it didn't seem to cause any stability issues. So I don't see any reason why they wouldn't just normally up the cap to 20 and maybe just up it. They, it might just be good to go now for as, as many as possible. Um, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, no, I mean, uh, Bex did say that they were working on like doing like free private leagues for, for events and stuff like that to help the scene a bit. So that would help a lot too. That would, that would definitely help a lot. Especially if you start getting into thirty or forty or fifty thousand people playing, that's yeah. And then little... yeah, I mean, if GDD are okay with it, instead of so the way we've been doing it right now to crowdfund, because in the the early ones, like I ended up paying for a lot of the salts and stuff myself, uh, and a lot of people would help out, and we would just crowdfund it community wise. But now we have like the early buy-in system to fund it, so it wasn't too bad because like we would do if you wanted to reserve a spot and make sure you got in. You would pay two dollars, which pays for four slots. It's sixty cents per slot. Um, so that worked really, really well. But um, if they're doing the privately free, what we could do um, is to have like early access buy-in could be like contributing to the price pool instead, if they're okay with that. And that could be huge. Hmm. Crowdfunded price pool. I mean, we already have that, so and just. It would be, uh, yeah, it would be good to keep growing it. And then Shopify is doubling it up to 20k, which is huge, obviously. Yeah, yeah I definitely want to want to plan like a big uh, fundraiser uh, stream for the next one again. Nice. Kind of, I kind of paused on the last one. <laughs> but uh, that was super fun that one time I did one with Baker. Like the stream versus stream kind of thing. Yeah, that was awesome. So yeah, I'd love to. Um, I think we went a little bit off track, which is perfectly fine, but I'm just thinking, is there anything that we need to track back to? Valor, do you have the overview? Can I open that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just have I my personal it, notes. I need to open it again. <laughs> I don't think I'm not organized. Come on now. I never thought you were organized. I thought you, you wrote the topic list, so I thought you were you might be able to. It was exactly four minutes before you called me that I was frantically plugging a new webcam into my computer because I realized since I got the dual PC set up, I didn't actually have one on the Discord computer, and then calling someone else to test it to make sure it would run. <laughs> Professional streamer, by the way. Yeah. Hmm. The whole two PCs thing, and I just, it's been working for OBS, and it didn't occur to me until I was sitting down and just about to do the podcast. I'm like, oh, oh, I don't have a webcam plugged into this computer. Uh, whoops. So now we got two webcams. That's good. It's useful to have. Yep. It goes with my two green screens. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna get two of everything. You should get two microphones and two headsets. I actually did that for oh. a while. <laughs> uh, like a stereo mic ASMR setup. <laughs> can that work if you put a microphone on each side? Can you get them to one channel and the totally. other channel? Yeah, of course. You can pan in between. I feel like that would screw with people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ah, I just imagined yeah. that. As somebody's like looking around and it moves from one ear to your other as you listen that would that would fuck with me a lot yeah like you hang on this side for a while people fall asleep all of a sudden balor comes in from the other side yeah. <laughs> and they no, quickly turn be... around yeah I feel, I feel like i'd leave that stream just because it would be doing my head and i'm like no nah, i can't i can't do it I'm going somewhere else see ya <laughs> uh All right, I opened the thing now, but we covered most of everything in normal conversation because we're good like that. Yeah, we are professional. No, I, I, it is like that. It's like when you write a shopping list, you don't actually need to look at the shopping list to get all the items because you thought about what you're going to buy beforehand. And then when you write a topic list, that you, you naturally already prepare yourself for the conversation, at least to some degree. Um, 
You want to guys, uh, you guys, you want to play, well, do you guys want to talk a little bit about Atlas navigation methods? Like, what kind of, yeah, progression system works? I mean, I think most people have that down to the, the optimized route, but seeing that you have both Balor and me here on the podcast and a lot of people who are equally or almost as clueless as Balor and I, maybe you want to explain a little bit what, what's the the way to go. What do you skip and what do you, uh, what do you make sure you complete? What's the priorities? I mean, I, I usually, in the end, aim to complete everything on the entire Alice just because it's like most returns and once you have favorites, it's not a problem. But this time I didn't complete Palace because Palace sucks. And if you're yeah. grinding Haywork at certain tiers, Palace will fill up your entire like drop pool of like that entire tier. And I think it competes with, uh, I think it's on two stone where I didn't like how it looked. So I just didn't complete it until like, uh, until I have favorites. But aside from that, I just do like the standard, like leapfrog this time I did like, a uh, in base league, I always go straight to, to like eight stones or to eight, eight instantly, just like the standard, like, Start in Glenich to Valdos to Proxima to uh, Tiern's End and then Haywork and just do like the full circle around the Atlas. This time I did like a one stone, or it was like I did some weird stuff like one, one stone Glenich into two stone Tiern's into two stone Haywork and then just like grinded that for Harvest and then to three stone Haywork into four stone Haywork without going in anywhere else. Just like because Harvest is kind of good. I don't know if you guys Harvest. know, but. A yeah. little bit, and it's, it's kind of weird because this entire Atlas strategy is just like, well, I live here now. Yep, <laughs> pretty much. And, and the entire time you're doing it, like, so I set it up so that if I was doing like uh, two stone Hayward, for example, that's tier ten through twelve, I believe, maybe maybe thirteen. Then I would do like I think it's like one stone Proxima, then which is like four through eight, so that every single map four through eight is always a harvest map. And then you like fill in the other uh, corners, so that, like every single four through eights is, is Proxima, which you use the Oshabi trick for. Nines all get juiced because you have no, no nine on the Atlas, and then tens do twelves are all Haywork. So like the entire step up, like two stone Haywork is one stone Proxima, and then three stone Haywork is two stone Proxima, and you just like follow it up the entire time so that all of your drops are just they're all harvest because harvest. Because harvest, and I think. Do you do you also complete the maps, or do you just... I mean, because how are you going to progress if you just check for Harvest and leave again? Well, you complete maps in Haywork, and you check for Harvest in Proxima. Like, basically, oh, okay. you're, you're just using it to just go in there. Like, whenever you're just, like, tired of mapping, or you get, like, a, a new base, you're like, oh, let's go check Proxima. You pull up your 40 maps, you get your four Harvests. Maybe you get something, maybe you don't. But it's just a nice little break just to go and do that. Yeah. And I think a little bit of a problem at the moment in the Atlas right now, which I'm fairly unhappy with, is permanence. Like, something, it's it's sort of similar with your Atlas. As Imagine if you put in a skill point on your character, and the only way to make a new one was to make a new account. It's actually kind of worse than um, not being able to uh, uh, just remake a new character, because you actually break the entire account. Like, I remember there was, I think it was last league where Residence was a very low level map, right? It was like level two or tier four or something. That was two. And yeah, and that made it a really, really good strategy that I would recommend to people to, you know, have that as the only tier two. And that was insanely strong for farming six things, something that, especially if you're a new player, can be a, a large struggle. And I remember making that video and people were like, oh, well, how do I, how do I unremove, or how do I remove them from my Atlas? What do I do now? I've done two of them. And I'm like, oh, you're screwed. Make a new account. That doesn't feel good to tell a player. Um, and th there are two ways to fix it. They could either go back to the old ways of letting us remove stuff on the Atlas or um, have it way, way earlier that the first favorite map slot unlocks. Because the favorite map system is really, really good. And the entire thing they, uh, they said when they came out with it, uh, because they got asked on a podcast, can we still remove maps? And they said, no, there's no need to anymore. Which I think if favorite map unlocked um, very, very early, like maybe like half the first region or something, or at least, I don't know, earlier, uh, I think that would be true right now. Because the favorite map system is really good. I think it should unlock when you get all four watch tens for that region. Which is <laughs> even earlier really... than that. I think so. Yeah, for the first one, I think 
it should be slightly earlier than that. Because if if it took that long, then you still have incredible power from not completing things, which I don't necessarily think is a good thing. Yeah, I mean that that's like twelve maps, which is assuming you're you know in, in your first twenty stones, it's decently fast. It's yeah. not just it's not just twelve stones for our, like an average player though. They'd probably be doing do them in one area, right? Before you get four in one area, you're probably like 25, 26 stones in or something. For most people. I think so. I mean, like, yeah. it really just depends on your strategy for how you get your stones. Cause, but like, that's it, the thing, right? A, a more casual player, they're not going to have a strategy. Yeah, they're just going to be doing everything. And I, I think for, for like hardcore players, it's already not a problem, right? If, if you or me really need to, we're going to set up a strategy where the Atlas is perfect and we're only getting exactly the maps we want. Uh, so the favorite map system is like a huge benefit to players that don't want to get that in depth to it. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. That's like the the only thing they really need to change, in my opinion, on the Atlas. It's, I don't know, it's a little bit top heavy right now. That might be good. Before they put in the favorite system, I had, I even wrote up, it was like a two or three page document and actually sent it to them of my idea of how, what to do with the Atlas. And it was, I had, I had, the idea of a favorited map was in there, although I didn't call it that and I only had one, but I had the idea of four different little tokens, one that would make something drop this one far more often, one that would lock a map so it would never drop again, but it wouldn't remove it so I could get completion still on it. I could do the map, but then I could be like, lock this map, never drop this map for me again. And then you one that would that make for it self, very don't you? Uh, yeah, there's, there's. I wanted one. Per, I want one of those per region, so I can be like, <laughs> I don't like this map in this region, and then it'd be eight of them total, and then you could there'll be the eight worst maps that you hate. Never see them again once you complete them. And, and I want that. <laughs> but I don't know. Favorites work really, really well when you've got three of them. But I feel like one of them does almost nothing. I don't even notice it. If I yep. put the first one in and then I do a hundred maps, I don't see any difference in the drops. Once you've got three of them, it's big, but... The third one is just so late. Usually I get the first two at the same time, and then the third yeah. one is like... It's very far off because you have to get a eight in most regions to get the third. Yeah. Yep. But that's the first time it feels the favorite system feels good to me is when there are three of them, then it feels great. Yeah, I've kind of found myself just not using favorites, at least in like these short-term events, because if you're trying to grind 10 bosses, you can either use favorites very like consistently to like force certain maps to drop and like shuffle around, or I found that if, if you just do nothing with favorites at all, you'll just kind of sustain 10 bosses just fine, as long as you're, you know, chisel, alk, and doing rituals and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And you can just ignore it entirely, and it's... It's fine. That, that Maven stuff has definitely encouraged me to run a lot more maps, different maps than I normally would. Yep, I love it because I, I, I've i never enjoyed like the shape strand meta or, or like the, the whole yeah. bit where you just grind one layout over and over again forever. Like I, I get so bored to doing that. So the, the Maven stuff is very, uh, very, very nice for me. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I never minded it. Didn't, didn't bother me at all. I, li I like running one map forever. So I was a little bit hesitant that i had to run different maps to get this one done but then i don't know, just felt fine i was just like oh it's all right i can run my one map for a little while and then be like oh, i want to do maven now so i'll just go and pick out a bunch of maps and run them and somehow it feels okay now like they made it rewarding enough that i'm okay with it <laughs> which is i think good except now i have to run different maps but it it Oh, it just doesn't feel bad anymore. Yeah, no, I, 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 I think that. it's pretty good. Yeah, it's a really nice and organic way, or like it feels just natural to the game. It doesn't feel super forced that it. Well, while it is forcing you into running different maps more or less, because running the same over and over wouldn't give you the same progression, but uh, just it feels good. I like it. There's one thing I was really, really looking forward to before the league happened, when they told us about the league, that 
or the expansion, I guess, that that didn't happen. We can't actually do it. And it's still a little bit upsetting to me. I wanted to be able to put every version of a boss in the same boss encounter. So like every version of Doldry from every map that has Doldry oh. in it. And then fight all the Doldries at once. But it's uh, never I'm fine with just having two revolts in my Valdos. <laughs> like I wanted to do that. I wanted to, I was going to sit down. I was going to make a list of all the bosses I could fit in and be like, let's have like the most themed boss fights. There, there is one thing I don't like about the 10 arena thing. The, the random chance for it to just release all of them at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's like a really, it's like a really weird thing. I actually had that happen. Um, in one of my practice runs, and I just got mashed instantly. I was like, if this happens in the actual gauntlet, I am screwed. Yeah, if it happens like the first time, you kind of have to just log, but yeah. like, once you're kind of strong, that's the best one, because then you just get in and out instantly, just pop them all yeah. and leave. Yeah, I think I would rather prefer it to be an option, rather than yeah. to be like a 5% chance or whatever. <laughs> it's like, the, and it, it leaves the player like, did I fuck something up? Like, why did this happen? It's also kind of annoying because at least in Haywork, it's uh there's there's like the plaza boss, which if it's any combo except for alternate ones, I'm fine having it in there. But if you get alternate ones and you have that boss in there, you are so fucked because it puts that like 30% like action speed slow on you, which you can't avoid. You can't warding it off. It's mm. not unless you're a yeah. juggernaut, it's on you. And then you it's over. Yeah. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, I feel the not only in the Maven fight, we talked about it earlier, the RNG is a little bit big with the multi-boss, but also with the, with the 10-way invitations. Because it could, like, most of mine just go like, oh, if she releases two bosses and then another three and then maybe five. I've never seen 10 at once for me. Um, that it's very sounds rare. terrible. Yeah, I didn't I have it at I'm all in SSF Hardcore. Really? Yep. I've, I've had it once all league. Like at all, I've been playing characters that want that to happen. Like, just give me all ten right now. Like, I don't need to wait. But it doesn't. It doesn't happen. But I couldn't deal with it on league start. That would not. I mean, it's soft core, so I could. I'll just use four portals. It's fine. But, <laughs> but, but generally, <laughs> generally, you don't want it to happen on league start. But then when you do want it, it can't happen. Yeah. All right, left on our topic list is something we know very little about. I'm going to assume Ziz doesn't know anything we don't know about our next league. I do not. All right, cool. That's good, because that means you can be involved in the conversation. <laughs> so Ultimatum came up. We got a trailer. This is the first time we've got the name of a league before the announcement, right? I don't remember ever getting a name. Oh, yeah. We just get told 3.14, announcement then. I think maybe it was because it got leaked last time because now uh, now they are reaching out to loads of streamers and stuff for like an ad campaign. Um, and since they already like disclosed it to those streamers that are part of the ad campaign, uh, I think it was like Fixed Your Life or something leaked it uh, and a lot of the expansion names and stuff by accident. So I think it's probably just to like get ahead of leak. I think it's just for that. Probably. I'm that makes sure. sense. Because it was very weird. I was like, why do we know the name? Why do we know the name? We never know the name. They figured yeah. out the technology, how to leak the name without having people find out where the, the leak <laughs> promo page is. <laughs> so I remember that was once, oh, yeah. once they leaked the, the entire thing. Or like someone found out where the pathofexile.com slash whatever leak name is. and leaked. The yeah, like it was early. already live. And then yeah. it just wasn't linked anywhere. And someone just actually found it that was yeah. pretty good probably brute force was that legion yeah i think so am i the only one that managed to, to avoid all of the leaks whenever that happens no i i usually don't look at them i i mean i look at them on stream once they're out but i like i'm i'm pretty good at staying spoiler free now with uh if something does like release while i'm off stream so i can look at it for the first time on stream it's really yeah. annoying when people start DMing me, like, the changes. Like, they're like, oh, did you see? I'm like, great, thanks. 
<laughs> Stop yeah. ruining everything. Now I did. That was actually like, the I big like... problem for me with like, enjoying like Valheim. People just spoil stuff. Oh, I saw your tweet, yeah. I really there's like also it no good someone... solution. Yeah, I really like it. I get I get sometimes I get DMs from people who are like, stuff got leaked, stay away from everything. When yeah. you're ready, here's a bunch of links in order that you'll need. And I'm like, fantastic, thanks. I'll look at them later and I'll just close Discord and I just won't open it again. It doesn't matter who messages me, I'm done. I will not see it again <laughs> until yep. I open it up to stream. <laughs> and that that works. That works well. Yeah. But yeah, so aside from avoiding leaks and spoilers, yeah, do you have any any speculations, any idea what's going to happen? Because to me, that uh, ultimatum leak thing, I mean, a lot of people said it looks like Ritual. It does have a circle, but then it wouldn't be the first thing to have a circle, or Ritual wasn't the first thing to have a circle. But it looks like it is like an altar in the middle where you can put an item on top. Does anyone else get that feeling that, that you can put something? It looks like a table where you can, where you can put something on there and it gets... Maybe modified or maybe altered or maybe yep. like corruption maybe, maybe it's, every single map. It's, it's Val two point oh, right? It it did seem very, very uh like Val like. Um I maybe maybe this is when we finally get like uh, double corruption as a drop, like as an orb. I've always like wanted that ever since like incursion uh drop. Like uh I mean maybe <laughs> a double maybe, Val orb. Yeah, and like maybe they like rarer, like maybe the same drop rate as like an eternal orb, so like two and a half times an exalted orb. I need to like mm -hmm. re watch the trailer, I can't even completely remember everything. Good point, I'll throw that on. But then, like a Val orb where the face of the Val orb is not a, is not a face, but it's a Val orb, so it's like a Val orb inside of two half Val orbs. <laughs> I think we're gonna get some new modifiers similar to how, like, uh, in Heist, like the, the enchants have like upsides and downsides, and ritual of the bases are. Like downsides and upsides. I think we're gonna have like a Valor that kind of does that. It doesn't like destroy the item. It just like the the mod that it adds could not only be beneficial. Has has some cool trade off stuff. It's very Val themed. Yeah. So instead of that would be really breaking cool. your item, it might make it worse or better. Yeah. And instead of making it so you can't change it ever again, it could just like like exalt the item, adding a, like a Val modifier, which makes you take more phase damage, but deal more phase damage, or like something with, with trade offs. Cool. There there is an orb on that altar. There's and no they seem else. to change in size. Hmm. I feel like if uh, whenever I'm looking at the trailer at um, at five seconds in, that orb seems a lot bigger than the one at seven seconds in, even when you're standing around the same position. I need, I five need to seconds find in the is that again. one? <laughs> and and then... In. Yeah, that's further away, though. It's hard. But yeah, no, you're right. You are... You are the same position at two different points if you like wait a bit and at 16 seconds there's something else on top of the altar it is an item with some sort of like force field around it like there's a there's a shield or force field around it and then an item on top it's like a axe which is 3d art we haven't seen before maybe it's enchanting currency oh yo you're right there is an axe on there But yeah, because I don't know. I'm uh, I'm pretty excited. I yeah. I just hope we get a good boss fight. I feel like it's been a while since we've gotten good league boss fights. Like Delve. It's like the last time there's been like good like league bosses. Oshabi was like terrible. I feel like <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I feel like they don't really like putting big boss fights in league, which I think is sad. I, I would love every league to have their own boss fights. I feel like that's what always gets me the most excited. And I'm trying to think when we ever had one besides Delve. Incursion, but that and, doesn't really count. Shabby. That's a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the incursion, Breach. like, region, region bosses are kind of like just Surely. glorified bears. Surely Breach wasn't the last one before that. Yeah, I think Breach Surely is the, the last. I think Breach is the only time I can think of where we got proper boss fights. Legion? Oh, right. Oh, no, yeah, that's, Legion mean... wasn't a boss, yeah. Legion wasn't boss fight, but Synthesis had boss fights at least. Yep. Yeah, Synthesis did. With map mods you can't control that rolled like yep. GMP crit haste every single time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've never been a big fan of like random mods for boss fights at all. Me neither. That's why I was very glad that Conqueror's 
spawn in like their own map that never has mods so the the fight can be designed to be challenging and interesting yeah. without having to rely on map mods to make it that yeah. way yeah i hate that about l and the synthesis ones i did like that's probably why synthesis was my favorite league because i feel like synthesis had like everything uh that me is like somebody that grinds a lot like you have like something early in the league it, there's something at the end game and then you have like the third thing which is bosses and things to farm for um like with like metamorph especially i felt like there was something missing there like there was and breach and breach uh bullshit blight sorry (laughs) oh right yeah yeah metamorph and and blight there was something missing like some sort of like like for for blight there probably should have been like a unique blight map that had like a really really crazy fight or a hard fight It, it was right what like it we didn't get it but there was one what do you mean? Like, well, the the law around blight, the voice lines, everything, everything oh. about the entire blight lead led up to there being a massive, massive blight encounter after our regular blighted maps. We just never got it. Right, but that I, makes sense, and I, and that's that what is, I that I feel like that's the map. case for a lot of leagues where I feel like in Metamorph it would have made perfectly sense to have like some sort of like crazy boss encounter fight, which, but like basically what I was suggesting or asking for is. Kind of similar to how we have like the feared and stuff, but in one boss. Oh yeah, that that's a good point to bring up. Still, would you would you like to have uh, these invitations for other bosses in the game that we don't have them for yet? Like yeah. people have been hinting at uh, maybe Delph bosses get an invitation. I mean. I I guess I would hate the idea of the Delve bosses getting invitation just because they don't fucking exist. Uh, I haven't I had an L for of nine them. months of I, delving. The Delve bosses are also like their arena like is the boss fight, so I feel like it'd be hard to create them in like a Maven environment. Yeah, I don't think they will fit. Also, it's entirely possible that they'd be way way easier with mods you could control. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, owl and stuff aren't particularly hard. Yeah, a large part of their difficulty is whatever random shit that's always turbo multi proj. Like, always. Yep. <laughs> it's just, it's randomly hits turbo multi proj every time I ever get an all, which is granted maybe once a league, if I'm lucky. But it's always that. And if I got to control it, I just wouldn't roll those mods and then it would be significantly easier. So, probably not delve. Yeah, I don't remember exactly in which episode of our podcast that came up. I'm not sure whether I think Octavian talked a little bit about it, but it's just the idea. I'm not. I'm sure I agree that the bosses don't seem like a good idea to shove into the same arena because they're so dependent on their individual environments. I just like the idea of not only the atlas being customizable so that it fits your individual experience better, but also being able to upgrade all other areas of the game as in heisting, delving. And yeah, blighted maps, for example, because blighted maps are also outside of the atlas. Blighted maps don't get affected by the no, they're not in the regions, no, right? They're not. I feel like the conquerors would fit very well. Like you could very easily like do like oh, you could yeah. do the 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 conquerors where you are either fighting just four of them or four and followed by Cyrus at the end or like I want four and Cyrus at the same time. Yep. Yeah, and then. I'm personally extremely disappointed in Cyrus level 9. Cyrus level 9 should change the it's entire nothing. fight and the Conqueror should be in the fight. Cyrus 9 is nothing, right? It's yeah, it does five. nothing. And as far as I can tell, and I ran a lot of them, it's actually worse than Cyrus 8 for drops. Yeah, I was going to say, Cyrus nothing 9 is... Wrong. is... Like, you get less really? reward at 9. I think that's just that's just confirmation bias or like I bad RNG. I think that's RNG, just but... your RNG because every time yeah. I've seen spreadsheets of eight versus nine, it is a, a very clear increased drop rate. I saw the same. Maybe it's just me being just shafted again. Like that could be the case. Yeah, I think I'm, so. I'm okay with that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, would, I would love to see it bumped up. Yeah, I, I I just want the fight to change. Like I love. I think one of my favorite things in the game is Ziri versus Uber Ziri. Right. I think that's such a cool concept. And I really like the entire Uberids area fight with the three bosses in one area, too. So there's three phases in Cirrus. I would be, I'd be incredibly happy if they just dropped one random uh, 
guardian into the first one one ran or conqueror into the first phase one random conqueror into the second phase and whatever two were left would jump in on the third phase when he came down <laughs> and just one. leave there's us four to phases, shit ourselves right? yeah there's, there's four sure there's three isn't there three no, no. no there's there, four there, there's three p1 and then one p2 phase yeah so what they should do should be like first like a conqueror first one conqueror then another conqueror then two conquerors and then four in the last Oh, you want to fight them multiple times? You want all four at once in the end phase? Yeah. I, I want Veritania to start casting a tornado, and then Dr Cyrus teleports me with the maze into her <laughs> while Drox Slam is getting at the same spot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you want like four people total in hardcore to ever kill it? <laughs> four champions. I, 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 just... <laughs> I think there is room for for everything. Like there's like something small like that that you don't even necessarily need to have a big reason to do it. I'd be okay with that. Because like, stuff like that is fairly doable on, on softcore, and, and yeah, you do have something for... It's it's something I think World of Warcraft does better than uh, almost every game, and Darky can probably talk about this, or uh, you can disagree or agree. I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel like... Uh, I was talking a little bit about casual games yesterday, and I feel like World of Warcraft does really well, where I'd say the game is like marketed and aimed at casuals, but it still does such an extremely good job where, like, you know, when, when the Mythic content is released, you still have something there for the top 0.01%. I think it does it better than any other game. Yeah, I mean, when, when that content is released, it is, like, extraordinarily difficult. And then, you know, two weeks later, you have higher gear, they nerf things, they make things easier that were just, like, unintuitive, and then it becomes more, like, manageable for everyone else. But, like, it is, it, it's kind of like one-of-a-kind content, really, which is why I still play it. It's just... Mm -hmm. There's nowhere else to get that kind of group PVE like coordinated stuff. It's just it's it's really good. Yeah, and and that that I guess is why I really love things like Azeria and Uber series where you have like the the easier version that you can like practice on, you can train on, uh, and then you can go in with. I, I wish almost every boss had that. Yeah, I don't I don't see a harm in adding an Uber or like a yeah super hard version of every single encounter in the game. But maybe that's something that we can expect from a future expansion down the line. I mean, at first I thought Maven was there to sort of raise the the cap of the highest, hardest content that you could do before I understood how the league works. You know, it's similar to how uh, in Metamorph, Metamorph, Metamorph was with Conquerors, right? Yeah, Conquerors added the ability yep. to run tier 19 maps, right? Yeah. So it did theoretically raised the bar of what is the highest content in the game. But then for farming content, and then would be cool if we get something like that for bosses where you can one-up the bosses. You know, technically tier 19 maps existed before then. There was, um, <laughs> when, it, when the entire Atlas first, I can't remember exactly what patch it was, but whenever... Uh, that entire map system was changed when we got the new atlas. You could vendor 316s for tier 17, and you could vendor 317s for 18. And you, I got all the way up to tier 19 map. I wasn't able to get a tier 20. And then I put it in the map tab, and I lost my map. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I remember that because it goes into a slot that doesn't exist. Yep. I was, uh, was going to ask if it was actually a tier 19 when you launched it. Yeah, it was. Because... If you launched it now, you could add another three levels. To so it. in that patch, it was, but it got fixed. The tier nineteen maps would just be tier sixteen. Ah, uh, damn. But I, I managed to do like I was farming tier eighteens and stuff for bases, and they were crazy hard. Yeah. Also, I, I love, I love what Sai said in chat, which is you have Cyrus in maps, which is hard, and then you have the Cyrus fight itself, which is easy. But the, the yeah. possessed like Cyrus monsters are insane. Yeah, the monsters are insane. Cyrus himself is not that problematic in the maps. No, it's that he possesses things. Yeah. But he, him existing there makes it... That was so fucked difficult. in like the SSF Hardcore Maven race because it's I ended bad. up just completely ignoring uh, level 4 maps because there's so many people getting one-shot by it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, I slept on day one before like level 90 so i got the heads up on that and whenever i spawned cyrus i didn't port out i just spawned him in uh in t14s with no damage mods and it was it was still a little spooky but it was it was manageable it's literally running white maps or 
blue rolled maps that are blue. just yeah blue yeah. nothings blue nothings which is what i did yeah. pretty much the entire gauntlet as well just blue nothings i wonder if map sustain is going to stay this easy next league I, I hope it gets harder but a lot of people love it this easy yeah i think this is the easiest easy it's been since like metamorph and then before that beyond like yeah. metamorph i did only blue maps and it was fine as well I feel like it's always early game that people complain about map drops and like, oh, this shit, and it's way too RNG. And then towards the end of the league, everyone's shitting maps and everyone's like, oh, uh, I kind of like the time when maps were something valuable to drop. You were looking forward to those map drops. I I agree. I really, really miss the time where, um, where it was exciting to drop a tier 12 map or a tier 14 and a tier 15 was like, oh my God, I got a tier 15. This is like 30 chaos and exalt were like 30 chaos. It's like one X per map. Um, however, I think that's more a problem with the fact that there are no exciting drops in Path of Exile anymore, which is really bad because it's a game where drops is supposed to be the exciting thing. I think that's a huge problem. I, think... I get excited if like a full headhunter drops on the floor. Yay! Not a doctor Poggers. card though. Like that's just stuff. Like yep, doctor. Yeah, that, that also to? fits with your rate of picking up items because you drop that once a league, and that's how much you you're looking to pick up. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you're right. Even on day one, there's not much I'm excited about dropping. No, absolutely, you're right, Susan. That's like a, a recurring thing that keeps popping up on the podcast. Is like, yeah, it's it's kind of a drop based loot based game but when do you ever get excited about a drop yeah um and and that's something i feel like has changed and i feel like diablo 2 did better than any other game where it has so many exciting drops that you can drop all the time uh i would say the current version of path of exile especially in trade league there's i'm there's nothing that isn't cross league that is exciting that can drop right like if you don't have things like budget or brotherhood headhunter etc what can drop that's exciting in trade league in a normal map? Headhunter is cross league, so that doesn't work. But then what? Combs? Not worth anything. Shavs? Not worth anything. Uh, I'm Shav specifically. I like it that it's so easily farmable, but I I feel like they've missed out on on adding new things to the top end. Like the way that I've looked at Path of Exile for a while now, and I'm going to make this really short because I explain that almost every episode. It was like oh. a landscape of things that gets eroded down and then they get new things added onto the top. And I, f I feel it's completely fine that things that we aspired towards like a year or two ago are now more common and that more people have access to it because that's a great thing. How the, the dynamic between content creators and the, the casual player base works. But... um. Yeah, I, I I feel like there needs to be more impactful drops. And yeah. I, I, th I think uh, Quellex in your chat actually had a really good comment. I get that it was more exciting to get a tier 16 to drop, but I dislike that my character could handle the content, but just had to keep juicing the map or lose my apple. And I don't think yeah. map drops doesn't necessarily have to be what is the exciting thing. There just needs to be something. And I think that's why I did like maps back in the day, because... I mean, there's like it's they've maybe been making it less and less exciting drops. So like now we don't even have maps anymore, right? Like there's there's no excitement around dropping a tier sixteen. So last last beta we had Taki and he said something about items that keeps coming back into my head. It's now stuck in my head. It's been stuck in there for two weeks. I don't know what to do about it. There is a zero percent chance it cannot happen that the best items that you could wear could ever drop on the ground. Mm -hmm. Especially now with Maven can't Orb. Happen. It actually cannot happen. There's yep. not like some minuscule chance where maybe one person in a million people once out of every 25 leagues might find the perfect item on the ground. They can't drop. You cannot get double influence items. They Last Epoch has a solution to that. They All the best steal. ones are double. Tier six, tier seven. Like the in, in last epoch there are two tiers that are drop only and you can craft from mm -hmm. there. I I think PoE should consider doing something similar. I, yeah. But like I don't I don't know what I don't know what the solution is for us. All I know is ever since he mentioned it, I can't think of 
any See, reason that should ever be the case in a loot based RPG. Yeah, I there agree, should not be a zero percent chance that I get my item off the ground. That just shouldn't happen. I can't remember exactly when, but there was one league where I actually dropped a Val Regalia that people mirrored. It was nine hundred and eighty six energy shield. It dropped wow. that way. But you can't do that anymore. That'll never no. happen. Can't. Well, weapons. Weapons can drop yep. pretty much piss. You can drop an Elder Axe that is perfect, but then you still have to like tempering orbit technically. But yeah, yeah. Okay, you definitely could. You could drop fizz weapons yep. for brutality builds. Yeah, weirdly, I always drop triple elemental flat damage axes with uh, crit and attack speed. I'm like, who's who's playing that? That's like, yeah. even oh. when elemental stacking builds were good, no one would use an axe. Yeah. I, I do think something special needs to happen with drop only. And I mean, I think it will too. Like, I think it's very clear that they are experimenting hard with um, smart drops, which if you don't know what smart drops mm. is, it's a system they have, for example, in Heist, where the items are way more likely to just be good. Like, you know, if you, if you drop a smart loot axe, it's likely to have percentage fizz, flat fizz, and attack speed, right? It's well rolled. Yeah, it's rolled multiple times and then the game picks the best result based on... Yeah. I don't even know how the game knows what the best result is, but I assume there's some, some synergy values and some, nice. some scoring system in, internally. I kind of wish that's how every single like, item drop that used this roll of wisdom on. Yep. And then, yep. like, I feel like if, if I'm using like an, an astral plate, I see an astral plate drop, I should be excited about that. Yep. Instead of it just being like, oh, that's an alchemy. And they actually already have something like that. They have every time an influence item drop, it at least has one influence mod on it guaranteed every time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the same way that is a thing, I want influenced items from Maven to drop and they, I want them to have guaranteed double influence and one guaranteed elevated mod. Maven loot physically hurts me. Yeah. I, I, um, I can't stand the belts. Like They made this mistake eight years ago with Aziri. Just put life on them, please, so they can be viable. Yeah, and if they don't want to put life on them, like, the thing is, right, the Maven is the pinnacle boss, so at least on the league where, where it releases, the majority of the loot should be good. Um, mm -hmm. and, and for example, like, the Awakener is literally perfect. Every single loot that drops from the Awakener is good. There's no bad loot from the Awakener. There are some that are less valuable, but that's going to happen no matter what you mm -hmm. do. Like, the helmet doesn't sell for a lot, but it's still, like, a very, very strong piece of gear. Whereas... I mean, there's not really anything I'm excited about from the Maven. And I feel like they didn't take into consideration enough how strong the belt slot is in Path of Exile. You have Headhunter, you have Soul Tether, you have the, the Harbinger belt. You have, like, very, so very strong tether. belts. Yeah. yeah, you have very, very strong belts. Um, and then I feel like the, the belts that draw from Maven, they could have just had those charges as extra ones. You could have kept Enduring charges and have the Ruthless ones. Then they would have been a good, very strong belt. Do that and put 40 or 50 life on them or something. Even just a low roll. Well, yeah. the, the, the Brutal Belt has 50% life on it and like 700 armor. That one actually is like, that, that one's usable. Uh, yeah. The other two are not. <laughs> yeah, and, and even if they are, they are incredibly niche. Yeah. And, and I, same I with like the, the Maven helmet. Like you have to, like rings are insane. They have to literally go back to a blue ring. Like maybe it should have been you know, unique ring on your left and influence ring on your right or something. I but feel like, like blue rings can be really good, though. You, you can still have, like, a 94 life curse on hit ring, and that's, like, that's pretty good. Sure, but it is, it's it's still, for dropping from the pinnacle boss in the game yeah. of the expansion, I think it was very disappointing. Loot. Yeah. Yeah, they have this idea that, like, a lot of uniques or most uniques in the game should have a downside and, like, an interesting interaction, but particularly with items that are gated behind such high content or like some of the highest content in the game i don't see a problem with them just being straight up better than other items at least by a little bit yeah and uber uber other loot is a little disappointing for me as well like you have watcher side which is the most exciting loot in the game i'd say um and one of the last bastions of chase items left um but then like the, i don't know why they hate the disintegrator so much like it's never been a good item would it have been good with Battle Mage if they hadn't adjusted for it? Yeah. Yeah, 100%.
they they like I don't know I I think they need to let some things be like strong for at least one league. I don't I don't see any problem with the things during the league being OP strongest things. Mm -hmm. Like that, it always feels like that's how Especially, it should be. Yeah, I agree. Especially everything league related. Like for example, like. Even uh, let's look at uh, Harvest, right? Harvest was oh, insanely yeah. strong, right? And when Harvest went out as a league and they said, we're we're going to be like uh, putting it back in a future implementation and we're not putting it back in instantly, there wasn't like a huge shitstorm on Reddit. There wasn't like, people weren't yeah. like, oh no, the sky is falling. We can no longer play the game, right? That happened because they put it back in with full power. Yeah. That's the entire problem. Yeah, because if, if, uh, if right now, if they had put Harvest in, Instantly, like if like if ritual had never happened, if Harvest was coming back now in this coming league for the first time, and the implementation they're now suggesting was what it came in with, there would be nothing but praises. There would be nobody Everyone saying the happy. game is unplayable. Yeah. Everybody would be extremely happy. Everybody would be like, "Oh my god, this is such a great implementation." Even if it came at fifty percent of the suggested power level, people yeah. were so happy for some form of Harvest to come back. So I think because of because of that and just past things, I think the PE we can make just show them like they're quite okay with something being really strong and really OP in the league, and they're not necessarily expecting that to go core from the league. Yeah. I I would almost love it if almost every league was kind of like that, where the league itself and how you're interacting with it is the most powerful thing to do right now. To a certain the extent. Turned way back. I don't want uh, abyss levels of power. Like, Abyss Jewels were stupid the moment that they came. Like, it was... Yeah. They competed with Belt Implicits, and they were way too strong for that. Sure. I think that was fun, though. But It was fun, but, like, it would have been fine with, like... Like, obviously now, in the current context of PoE, Abyss Jewels don't seem very strong. But back then, in the current implementation, Abyss Jewels would have been insane as well. Yeah. I liked my 150 life, 150 mana Belts. So mm. good. And with uh, damage. <laughs> yep. And with like four to seventy flat damage to spells as well, because why not? I used to spend so much time like rolling jewels. I, I I spent like tens of thousands of alts rolling for that jewel and regals and exalts to get the perfect jewels for my my totem guy. Yeah. Yep. And it was very balanced. <laughs> very balanced. I'm sure it was. <sighs> I, I do hope we see more bosses like the Awakener, though. I, I honestly, like, cannot give them enough praise for, like, the loot there. It, it's so, like, it's so multi-leveled. Like, you have e every single piece of loot is great. It's mm. just really well done. Yeah. People seem to really hate that fight, though. For yeah. Reason. Yeah, yeah, the fight like, is... Okay. People don't like it. People don't like dying. It is, I, I will it say, it is kind of unintuitive. Like, for example, I've watched, like, a lot of streamers even do the fight for the first time. And I'd say particularly, I mean, a, a, few, of the, a few of the phases are just pointless, right? And that, that's really bad. I think mm -hmm. that gives, like, a really bad first impression for the fight. I think it was a lot better when the clouds followed you uh, and you had to kite them around. Um, and when he goes up in the air, like, it's just people are like, well, what, what do I do? Do I just wait? And I've seen, like, some people just wait for him to go and, and fly. They've just been standing there for five minutes going, like, Okay. Yeah. The whole inter intermission phase kind of like lost the uh, purpose whenever they got rid of the, the storm mechanic, which they yeah. kind of had to do because people kept crowding it to the entrance and then complaining that they broke their fight. So, the, I mean... <laughs> yeah. not really I a, much a prefer there. the original version of that fight before they changed it. Minus the nut, like bugs. Like it, it should never have been able to crowd the entrance and obviously yeah. getting stuck on the stairs was shit. Yeah. Like that was <laughs> a maze just right on top of the stairs. He's like, oh, okay, I guess I just die now. Um, like that was shit. But like other than the buggy bits of it, the very first implementation they have was was a really good fight. Yeah. And there I wish I played softcore more because then I would have gotten a really good taste of that fight. But like before they changed the fight, I think I only killed it once on a uh, level 95 summoner. And it just, I didn't feel anything of the fight. I was just standing there and watching my minions take him down. Yeah, no, like, the, the fight itself is, is fairly bad. And the fact that I have, like, 
a, a fucking sinking feeling in my chest. Like if I, if I, I very rarely do, but sometimes I've logged out in the Awakener fight. When I'm running back, I'm like, I need to be oh. ready to instantly log out in case he bugs out, instantly teleports me back into a falling meteor, right? I have to be mm -hmm. very ready to just instantly log out because there's so many ways this fight can bug. He can fire backwards. He can just bug out and like so many also, things can happen. He can also insta beam you, know, you once you're walking in, right? Yeah, yeah the, the the die. Dash it. It, it's like the, the the meteor that can fuck you really bad. Like like this is saying, you can get like ported into a storm. You can get ported and just insta killed. It's it's a uh, spooky. That's that's the new one that I found this league. I don't know if anyone's had it, but when you walk back into the fight, he can port you to the center of a storm that's already down. Yeah, yeah. it's very rare, but <laughs> and yeah. you just die in the dark. <laughs> yeah, it's very like, hardcore oh, unfriendly. All right. <laughs> Just don't log out. Yep, just never log it. If you log it, then you know. Just launch another. Consider map not going back in. Can... Yeah. Yeah. Just pretend it's one portal as well. Yeah, I think I've only logged once or twice. <laughs> Actually, stuck in the meteor maze in the walls. So that's a fun one. Yeah, but uh, outside of bugs, like the fight's pretty great. I I do wish like it would be perfect to just have a a conqueror or something in the middle phase, like. That would make sense too. Like, oh, you know, I'm I'm rec recuperating, fight him and distract him. Meanwhile, yeah, yeah, I, I summon my uh, my minion of uh, awakening. Uh, no, I, I really also like the third phase. I really think it's a great mechanic that you have to keep track of him. It's a little bit of an acquired flavor because it's not quite like anything else in Poe. Whereas it's kind of diametrically opposed to Maven, where Maven is a lot of the same. A lot of stuff that we've seen before, for the most part. Cirrus was like mm. mostly mechanics we haven't seen before. And I really like the the keeping track of him mini game, jumping over the beams. And I, I just wish that movement skills were a little bit more equal in, in the way they interact with the beam. And it yeah. feels silly to throw flame dash on every single character. Just because, but... I really like the Maven fight. I I love that they're experimenting with like more in depth mechanics, like the memory game. I thought was really cool. I absolutely detest that you can just log out. Like I was very surprised because they have something similar. They have a counter mechanic for this already in the game in the Shaper fight, where you have three seconds of invulnerability, um, which means that you could mm -hmm. technically still, even if they do the same mechanic as for Shaper, that you have three second invulnerability, you can still log out and save yourself a memory game. However, that would cost you four portals because you could um, go back in, log out, wait three seconds, log out, go again. Yep. I think that's fine. That seems that like if you fuck up a memory phase, losing three or four portals, that seems fair. Yeah, yeah I agree. Portal though, because there's only one damage event. You just log out whenever it's like at the edge. It'd be like a little spooky. But no, it does do. I'm pretty sure it does death damage too, right? If you're inside it the... Does, but it, if you're at the very edge, it should only be one portal. Sure. I'd still say that's better than the current implementation of logging out. Yeah. Just like, sweet, just waiting. All right, yeah. we're good. Let's like, go. Back in the day, you screw up bullet hell on Shaper, and that cost you three portals. The portal you went in, and then two, you have to go back, log out again, and then go back, and then you're okay. Yeah. You can just dodge them as well if you want. I can't. Sure. Maybe you <laughs> can. <laughs> I can't dodge bullet hell. That's not happening. <laughs> The first time I saw someone do that, that was that was quite the event for me. There was yeah. some super fast Asian dude on like a archer build that was like <laughs> running around in the yeah, weirdest that like. Good at That's beautiful. <laughs> I, I do quite like the Maven fight though. How do you guys yeah. feel about the memory game? I hate it. I love it. I can't. I can't remember it. I have I to log. I particularly like the last phase because everything before the last phase feels a little bit RNG, like the sequence of the heart abilities and the maven at the same time and the positioning there. And then also obviously the boss bomb spam is super RNG. But when you made it to the last phase, it feels like 100% mechanical. And every time you fuck up or you die, it's 100% your mistake and you could have done it correctly. Unless, of course, you spread the degen in a way that it's really impossible for you to navigate through the arena. But mm. then that's also on you. So, yeah, I, I feel like you have so much agency and it, it feels so much like in your hands to win the fight. 
Yeah, I think it's a really, really good fight. It was a lot of fun to do. And the thing with the memory game is, uh, like memory if, if, you, if, if you know that uh, whenever it's right, it's always top. Afterwards, it's like, like a lot easier to... Uh, to yeah, to I play. heard it can't be left after Wait, right, what? right? It can also not be right after right because it cannot be the same yes. thing twice in a row. So that limits the amount of possible combinations significantly. Yeah, if, if it picks a right, it's always top after. Really? Which, yes, which, which helps a little bit. It, it also can help if you... Uh, if you mess up and you don't know where to go and like you were on the left one, you can like always just guess top. And if you're wrong, then you go right and then top. Assuming there's only two left, but it's a, uh, just don't forget oh. as well. Or, or use fortify and just tank it. I love fortify <laughs> so much. It's so good. You just like, you get 40% for free and then you get the chess craft and then you can take anything in the game. Yep. Do you think that's good though? Like, do you no. really think that's good? No, not at all. It's so busted, dude. Like, <laughs> Like my Delve guy with Dread Banner and Fortify effect on the chest had like ninety seven percent less damage from Fortify only. Like, no, it's not, it's not good at all. But uh, yeah, it's here. They're probably gonna cap it eventually. At like you know forty percent or fifty percent or something. Yes. Would you rather see other defenses buffed up to well, not Fortify's level, or would you rather just straight up see a nerf to Fortify? Like, do do you feel like Zibakwa, for example, is in a good place right now? I think Zabak was a terrible worthless jewel that I would never use. Like it shouldn't have been nerfed at all. Yeah. The the thing with Zabak was the the opportunity cost for getting that much chaos res is also a huge investment. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's a timeless jewel which competes against like the pride which is just better. And then you have to also get an extra eighty ish percent chaos res that you just don't need for anything in the game except for Zabak, which is a pain in the ass. And then you have to also like it's just it. Gorus Vanity kills like all your pa your travel notes too, so like certain builds can't even use it at all because it's killing like it's killing combat stamina if you're putting it near the life wheel. It's killing like quick recovery, I think it's called. If you're putting it up, it might, might have matter. Like it's always killing notes that you want. Yeah, there's just so much opportunity cost for it, and it wasn't even OP unless you were like talking about it versus like shape balls, like versus penetration. It was, yeah. it was super busted, but it it, it it wasn't that OP versus yeah. just like base damage. In the at game. least. I'd say I'd say transcendence is really strong, but it is it takes such a long time to come online. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely not a big fan of that one. I feel like it, it can bait you if you don't set up your POB properly, mm -hmm. because of the way like you know armor calculates. It'll just be like oh I have 1.4 million HP, and it's like nah. <laughs> you, you just set the number to like 50k hit, or it doesn't matter at all. Like yeah, yeah. I wish that was a little bit more in-game explained to newer players because the amount of times I had to set people straight and be like, dude, what it says in your character sheet is estimated chance to evade, estimated physical damage reduction. That doesn't mean that that has anything to do with the actual reduction against an actual hit in the game. Yep. Yeah. That's a mm -hmm. weird one for sure. Hmm. So yeah, again, uh, back to the question, like, do you think Zabakwa is not in a good spot? But do you think that generally it should be possible to trivialize all the stuff in the game with enough investment similar to the way that Fortify effect stacking is able to trivialize things? Or would you much rather prefer the game to be as hard as it is without that, where you have to mechanically outplay a lot more? I think it should be possible, but it shouldn't be as easy as specking seven notes on the tree and getting one chestcraft. It should be a lot more investment than that. Yeah. Like if, I, if you have like, you know, Crusader helmet, gloves, belt for two matches and all of them, and like the plus matches on your chest and using a Saffles and running purities, if you're putting that much investment in, then yeah, you should be able to tank anything you want. But it shouldn't be as simple as like, you know, just one inch on your body armor. Yeah. I, I feel like how it was before with Sabakwa, like that is a very big investment. If you put that, that much investment into your gear, you, yeah, you probably should be able to trivialize the content. Yeah. It's like, um, the aura stacking build still technically exists now. Yeah. But yeah. and it can still do all content in the game and ignore stuff and stand up and walk away in a hundred percent delirious map without caring. It's immortal. It's pretty hard but to get to that point though. Level of investment now is incredibly high. And I feel like that's in a good place. I can't afford it. In fact, I can't Three afford it. Three digit X cost or four digit? Oh, uh like twelve mirrors? That sounds if like four digits. And get it done yourself. If you want to buy it, probably more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think that's fine. If you're going to spend that much and you make a ball build that's functionally immortal and can ignore every mechanic in the game and can do 
feared six weight carries on its own, that's fine. Yeah, I, be- that's fine. Because that's you couldn't do that in a competitive event, and you'd lose to people who would go for the mechanical outplay instead. Yeah, yeah I mean, people. even uh, like like the the Delver that the Oscar made with like you know twenty woke orbs and maven orbs and like fifteen hours of grinding. It was like compared to like the trade league or stackers, like his guy was trash. Yeah, yeah. The the level you can scale that build to is insane, but it requires so much currency and time to do it. So I think it's fine for the most part. Yeah, I, I think it's even healthy for the game that that exists. Yeah. As a top end currency sink. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing one next league because it's way more money than I've ever made before. And so that gives me a goal that's like five or six times the amount of money I've ever made in an entire league. Nice. That'll be a brand new goal. And be like, all right, let's see if I can put one of these together. So, I'm that'll be tempted to play hardcore trade league next league. Trade league. Yeah, Steel Steel's been trying to like convince me and a few others to like let's all go hardcore trade league. Hardcore trade league revival. Hardcore trade league is really good. Like people talk about its economy being dead, but its economy is perfect for like what you actually can get. It's not like so the problem with software trade is you should never actually interact with anything in the game because you can just buy it for cheaper always. Yeah. Hardcore trade, that's not the case. Like, There's only enough players that you can buy fossils, you can buy essences, you can buy a watcher's eyes maybe, but if you want the best gear in hardcore trade, you have to craft it yourself. And you can only trade for the tools to craft it, basically. Yep. Sometimes not even that. I don't know how it is recently, but like, well, I wasn't able to buy enough fossils in hardcore trade to do crafting projects that I wanted to do. Really, the last one I could target trade was Delirium, and there was still plenty of uh, plenty of fossils there. Like I, I was able to buy like scorch fossils by like the you know multiple hundreds per trade with people that were, I'm sure, ethically using that currency for things that were only in game. <laughs> the the mass exodus to Solo Cell found is another. Another tick on the reasons of why I left hardcore is just I know I'm not solo self found at all. That's not me. I don't I don't I don't I have no interest in that at all. Yeah, I mean for me like I prefer trade league. I just feel very forced. Um I feel forced into solo self found because of there is nothing exciting in trade league or very little. Hmm. And if it, if people all moved back to hardcore trade and just like stayed there, I'd be pretty tempted to do like alternating leagues. Mm. They're very different experiences. To be yeah. in hardcore and softcore is very different. Yeah, I know for sure. Mm. Yeah, if it wasn't for the for the great league start events that you always put up for HCSSF, I, I would play more. Uh small group found private leagues but i'm always super tempted to just I, I, it's just so fun even if i'm not one of the top mm-hmm. racers and i'm not like i don't qualify for anything because i die before end game anyway but it's just so much fun to see yourself going up in ranks on the ladder and be like oh today i'm on a higher position than yesterday oh i beat that guy oh that guy died in front of me i'm gonna overtake him and just yeah, even if it doesn't lead anywhere it's just so much fun yeah no i i really really do enjoy it as well Is there a, I mean, I'm sure you're going to announce something like that soon, but there might be an event coming up for the League Star, right? There's no event this league. There's no event this league? Oh, only for new bosses? Hmm? I mean, if he wants to go trade, he can't do an event in Solo Oh, wait. All right. <laughs> right? Oh, you could. Would... Well, I mean, we, 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 we would never do a, a trade league event. Like, that would, especially with like, money involved and stuff. It would just end up being, or it can too easily turn into just like people pooling one person. Like, so we'll, we'll never yeah. do like trade league events. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Definitely events and racing stuff has to be pretty limited. You can do trade like races for like team races in small private leagues, but not like a trade league. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. I think group self fun races can be a lot of fun. Like the, the mm-hmm. soft one we did with, uh, I forgot what it's called, the, the Havoc something, but uh, 
that one basically just like turned into like an XP race because yeah, it had like no cap on that. But I feel like there's a lot of potential there. It's just like it's very different than solo, and it's a lot of fun because it, it's like a whole extra like aspect of Poe is like min maxing group play. And yeah, it's very hard. I I thought it was a really really good way of doing it because like the first time we did a group fun race, I think it ended up terribly because it ended up with basically one person pushing, one person being aura support. And the other two people grinding chaos recipe. That was horrible. Uh, whereas oh. this time, I felt like everybody on the team could have like their own rules and do different things. And the 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 only thing that ended up being bad was it was uh, it was an XP race with extra activities or uh, extra steps. So like, I I do wish that it hadn't turned into so much of an XP race though. But it was really cool. I love the idea. Hmm. What what happened differently on that one? Because I definitely just missed the entire softcore race. Um, it was basically um, like you needed points in Delve. You needed level points. So it was very, very important that everybody in your group was as high level as possible. Uh, and you were still... like Our idea was we were going to try to get Lily as high XP as possible to try to help like increase our average. Um, and then like I, I was going for bosses, Nugi was going for Delve, and then Lily and Steel were pushing XP. And it was it was really, really cool. Like everybody like worked together. I think it took us like 13 or 14 hours and we had all bosses down. Hmm. There around. And and we were the first team to have every boss down, which I was really excited about because I hadn't fully read everything. You know, a reading's not my strong suit. So I thought the tiebreaker was very, very <laughs> big. But it wasn't. The tiebreaker was Let's say that Darkie's team had level 96.715 XP and our team had the, exactly the same. Then we would have won. It was like two, <laughs> like two decimals. And then it was like, oh, okay. So <laughs> there is no tiebreaker. Yeah. Like that's, that's how are you going to be that close with multiple people in the team? Yeah. <laughs> so it, it did end up being an XP race. But uh, I, I had a lot of fun. Same. Even though we were just playing four slammers and just memeing as slayers. It was very impressive what you guys did. I did learn that Slayer sucks from that race. I learned a lot of really <laughs> good info about Slayer. It's trash. It's so, like, just... Until you have, like, super in-game gear, like... Nah. Champion all day. Champion. <laughs> yeah. Champion was my first little 100. But Spark... I with Spark. Champion? <laughs> Which leak was that? Oh god, that's so long ago. Horrendous? Probably, yeah. We can find out. Was that <laughs> Endless Strand meta? No, it was uh, Gorge. It was before Strand. Oh, it was before 2. Strand. 2.2, 2016. Hardcore yeah. Horrendous League. Man. I'm using that's so long taxi. ago. Yeah, I think I remember the build. That was yeah. fun. I actually, and I found my first Voltaxic in Dried Lake. I was so excited. So I got it like, I got the Voltaxic five hours into League Start. So it was like my first character that League. And I think I did 11 Voltaxic Sparks that League before I managed to hit level 100. <laughs> yeah. Seven? I don't know. A lot. I MF'd my first hardcore character to 100. Nice. Please tell me it wasn't in Dread Lake. Go oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. No, we were in T4 burials up until about 92. And then it was like tier 12 or burials or something. And then we got to 97 and a half and was like, this is way too slow. And then there was a tier 16 map. I forget. I think... I. I feel like it was always burials. I feel like we could get it to three different. Oh, okay. Yeah, we elder orbed it up to sixteen. That's how it was done then. Yeah, it ended up being just a tier sixteen, and I barely even regeared. I had like four point two k life, just still full MF. <laughs> we were just all right. Let's go. And the the amount of clips we've got of both me and my Aurobot being below like two percent life like so many times in the last few days at level 99 in the hardcore just be like oh fuck oh fuck and then we kept thinking should we re-gear to like the actual characters like i could get 
I could get like six K more life right now. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, but then we'd stop making money. Like we're dropping so much currency. It's full MF. Ah, fuck it. Just keep going. So we basically made it all the way, made it all the way to level 100, the both of us in just full MF stuff. Nice. The power of auras. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't really... even have defensive auras or anything either. Oh, of course not. Just kill it before it kills you. It's fine. He was just a, a glass cannon bot for me to be another glass cannon and then too much damage and it was just run and hope you don't die. Bearers and barrels are the biggest problem there. I did... The barrel section is the bane of my existence. Every time I see it, like I know it's good. The rewards are great. I always want to roll over it. Like it's Bam. just, it's disgusting. Uh -huh. Yeah. Which section? Barrel section? The barrels. Barrel. The mysterious barrels. Oh, yeah. the yeah. barrels, right? Because you have Sorry, the just... uh, the explosion ones can be insane, and also the ones that give like the um, depending on your characters, the one that gives like the bearers, uh, because there's a fizz bearer. Uh, and on some characters, because like I don't think you can, or at least maybe you can now, but you couldn't block or dodge it before. Um, so if you have a character with like no fist mitigation, you can get like very easily taken out by that. Mm -hmm. We call them barrels because it's a play on barrels and bearers. Barrels. All oh, right, right, right. That's that's why I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. I was I was I was trying to hear bearers, and I was like, what well, barrels? What yeah. burials? <laughs> Burial chambers? Oh, yeah, barrels. no barrels. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, no. I didn't even deal with that sort of stuff. The closest I ever got to 100 was in Delve League, HCSSF, just resetting Delve all day. Got to 99. Mm -hmm. And it took me two days from 98 to 99. And then from 99 to 12% on the way to 100 took me an entire day. And I was like, no, I'm going to kill myself if I have to do this for an entire week. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, no, no, it's it's okay. That was close enough to 100. Keep that for some other time. Yep. I now have a level 99 pass. Good to see you. But to keep ourselves entertained on that push to 100, we were double corrupting two six-linked bows that I can't remember the name of that you use for MF bows and two shavs every day. So we would we were double corrupting two of them both every day, wow each, and that's that was a lot. Of, that's a lot of money because that was like um that was during that league, whichever one that was, the Elva League, incursion. incursion. That's the one. That was during that. So like in hardcore, buying those and that many fuses is a lot of money. But I mean, we were full MFing tier sixteen, so we were fucking drowning in money. And the only thing we could do to keep ourselves entertained was just. Buy shitloads of stuff to double corrupt constantly. Did you did you get any good outcomes? That's the real important. Nope, no, nothing. Only poofs and bricks. Yep. Poof bricks, a, a, a few white sockets that just got resold. It, it was garbage. The whole thing. Oh, that, that reminds me, <laughs> one good story about double corrupts as well. I always wanted to hit a good double corrupt, and just recently I had a really good double corrupt on gloves where I got like spell crit and. And a curse on hit or something like that. I don't even remember what it was. It was two really good mods on gloves, but it was on the minion conversion gloves. And I was like, no, damn it. Because I, I didn't need the curse and I didn't need the spell crit, obviously, as a summoner. So it was completely bricked. And you can't use those gloves on another character because then you could just use white gloves instead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well... So there's no League Start event, but there's something else that you do every League Scizorin, and that's this uh, PoE University thing. Is that going to happen this time? Bro, around? yes. Uh, I'm probably going to do that in like a week. I love that series. It's good. Yeah, I'm like I'm planning it now, basically trying to figure out. I'm going to make at least a new Harvest episode because I feel like a lot of people aren't really sure how to do the new Harvest. Mm -hmm. So I'll be I'll be doing a Harvest episode for sure. And because it, it is like a bit more complicated now, and like, yeah, people need help. So yeah, hundred cool. percent will probably be in like five between five and seven days from now. It'll start. That's awesome because I, I, I can't say I've watched it all because it's just the sheer amount of content that you put out for new players every league these days. But I've heard good things about it, and people have been praising the the format and the 
how helpful it is to newer players. And I have to say, it's quite inspiring for myself. I used to make a lot of content for newer players as well, but I've been very, really, uh, really unhappy with my own content production and some other things in my life. So I just took a big, big uh, break from YouTube. Mm. But um, yeah, w watching you do that stuff definitely inspired me to do some more myself as well. So that's a great thing. Yeah, YouTube's like the best way to grow on Twitch as well. So it helps. I like listening to them on two times speed while I'm doing shit in the morning. So I know exactly what's covered and who I can, when people ask questions that are like too complicated to give the direct answer to and it's covered, you can send them there. That's awesome. I'm just like, I want to know exactly what was covered where. So I can be like, yeah, just go watch that one. That's covered there. There you go. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah. I did the same thing with when I was playing the detonate dead for the gauntlet and I was leveling armor brand cremation and people were asking me about that. I just always send them to this guide because I was like, no way I'm going to make a better guide that's better documented than the, than that POB. <laughs> that is just so much work with all the different leveling setups and details. Really good that's shit. Awesome. Ah, and uh, yeah, is there anything in particular that we should be hyped to see from you, Darky, leading up to the this next league? Are you even going to play on League Star when there's no competitive event? Are you just gonna gonna show everyone that you're the best for for no particular reason other than being the best? Or? Just gonna vibe, man. I don't know. Play some builds. I got, I'm making some POBs for these to mess around on that aren't necessarily competitive. Just to you know, just to try to play. I tried a talk string guy earlier, and then learned that POB was a uh, not working correctly with that skill for like a few different things, which is it's fixed now. But uh, so that that's banned because talk screen is. I feel like it, it's such a bait. It like it, it it screams that it could be good, and then I try to make it good, and it just like it never like works out. At least from like while meeting like the you know defensive requirements of hardcore as well. Yeah. But I, I've made I, I spent so much time trying to make POBs for that, but that that's gone now. Now we're on the Inquisitor train. Totems. Yes. Totems. Yes. Maven Helm. Hexproof totems. It's coming. I feel like the one thing that slipped through the most is um that helmet that doubles resistance. You know, I think you know what one that is. I forget what no it idea. is. What is it called? There's a helm where like nearby enemies get double resistance. Oh, the one that can double negatively. Uh huh. Yeah, that's what I feel like too too many people don't know that if you double a negative number, it becomes time in the negative more. That's really strong. Yeah, I have Malice. That's the one. That's the one. That one I, I have not this. seen enough builds for. That's a that's a sleeper one that needs to that needs to be way more expensive than it is, let's say that. Very, yeah, it's strong. very strong. Yeah. Need to see that. You can put it sure, on Anime Guardian too, I think. You can. Oh, right. It's 50% increase, not double. But, like, so if you increase yeah, the negative yeah, number, it's also yeah. more negative. Right. That's yeah. amazing. I didn't, honestly, it didn't even occur to me. Lightning Man, my arc totems, they can't work. <laughs> no, but, uh, Elementalist, however. Just convert them to fire. <laughs> yeah, easy. Yeah. yeah. Balor, any particular projects coming up before uh, before we end up things and uh, tell people where to find the podcast? They've missed it. I got I got sick of doing all of the prep work to do one of the super super duper in depth website build guides and then having that that one build gutted by patch notes. So this league, I decided I was going to do four of them and just get them all ready. And if they hit one or two, then I've still got guides going. So that's like all I'm doing is testing over and over again for like two weeks. That's a good one. Just making sure everything is sorted for like four. And if they hit all four of them, I quit making guides. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not actually done. I'll keep doing it. But Jesus, <laughs> it happened two leagues in a row now. They've like basically deleted the one that I prepped for. And I'm like, oh. I, I, was, I made a terrible mistake. I accidentally qualified for Havoc Split season today. I, I submitted, like, I, I did two runs, two full Act 5 runs, and both of them were 159-something. Uh, the first one, I did some formalities wrong, so it wasn't technically according to the rules, but the second one uh, was was fine, and now I'm, like, 
yeah, one of the 35 people that qualified because I was just good enough to hit rank 35 with like the worst possible time that you could have just because Fightgar said last minute that he didn't want to partake. And that's why I slipped uh. up. And now I'm I'm in there and I need to run against all those people who actually can race. <laughs> and I'm just an imposter trying to trying to learn. Gotta that's going to be fun. That's true. And like, I think in an, in an actual race environment where I'm forced to spam these 10 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute XP races, uh, it's probably a little bit more efficient practice than trying to force myself. Because when I do race practice myself, I do reset a lot. I get tilted because my time's not good enough or little things go wrong and I'm unhappy or, yeah, or I even die. And then I'm like, ah, no, let's, let's start over because I need act one practice anyway. Act one is like the most important thing to get everything straight. So yeah, I, I feel like it's different from actually racing if I practice. Yeah. It's going to be fun. I'd say like actually racing is the best practice or at least my favorite. Yeah. Used to be so cool when the, the race seasons were happening. You could just press a button and just jump in, jump into a race, basically. Oh, wow. Even in-game notifications of a race happening soon, right? Like popping up. That. Yeah, one can hope for it to come back one day. Just like the Battle Royale that we didn't get again for, for April Fools. But Tell me about it. I mean, we're the PoE community. We we can endure harder setbacks. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, before we close things off, I want to thank you guys for coming in on uh, on this beautiful podcast. It was very nice and insightful to listen to your uh, perspectives. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. So coming on it was great, and uh, thanks to the audience sitting over there on the twitches and everyone who missed the podcast beginning it will be uploaded in full as always to balor mages youtube and to all the podcast platforms i'll do the the link thing again so you guys can find our bus broad page which should have a link tree to all the different podcast platforms but you should be able to find it just with the name faded connections because no one is silly enough to call their podcast like that unless it's a poe podcast <laughs> All right, and with those words, uh, let's hope the best for the upcoming 3.14 announcement. And uh, maybe we can throw together another podcast, but we'll, we'll keep you updated on the socials in the next couple of days. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.